Hello, everybody, and welcome to Final Show Films. I'm John, your executive producer here, and thanks for tuning in to watch or listen to whatever it is you're about to watch or listen to. In these trying times, we really do appreciate everyone that feels that we are worth their time, and we hope that we're able to give you something entertaining to while away the time as you spend it. Uh, we particularly want to thank those of you that feel like we're worth financially contributing to, uh, particularly our $25 and up supporters on Patreon, who are Antitonic, Drevian Alexander, Cat Waterflame, Rowan Parker, and Samantha Bates. Yes, I read that off of a list. Thank you very much for supporting us. I know that in these uncertain times, finances are tough for everybody, so that you're willing to donate to us means a lot to all of us here, and we thank you. That being said, please sit back, relax, and enjoy. That's not good. Hi. Cool. This hey. is Who wants to do the introductions? Because <laughs> <laughs> I take over this stream. I don't know why. Of... Okay, they can hear me now. I don't know why OBS just decided that it wasn't going to take my audio. I'm pretty certain I could be heard last night, though now that I think about it, I can't remember ever checking. Someone should check that and see if uh -oh. I could be heard. <laughs> That'd be awkward. Uh-oh. If it was oh, just boy. an entire stream of the players responding to a silent. Yeah, yeah, that'd be... I never... I'm saying that that episode has accidentally become the lost episode we were worried it was going to be. Yeah. I, <laughs> have, I have no idea. I will idea. go and check. I, cause I, I cannot for the life of me remember if I checked or not. Uh, it's been a couple days, folks. Uh, hello, welcome to Grand Terra Shadowfront. I'm John, I'm your Game Master for the evening. Joining me today is William. Hi, I'm William, and I'm playing Valdez Stonebeard, the Dwarven Samurai. And Jeremy. Hello, my name is Jeremy. I am playing uh, Ariel, uh, uh, ASMR uh, Gunslinger, and yeah, fuck 2020. And Mara. I'm Mar, and I'm playing Titania Valkorian, a Ladrin Druid princess. And Jack? Hey, everybody. I'm Jack. I'm playing Gent Minar, half-elf spellslinger. And Cody? I'm um, Cody. I'm playing Ithram Valar, hobgoblin war wizard. And Aaron? Hi, I'm Aaron. Sorry, I was scrubbing through content. I'm playing Carolina. In, uh, as far as I can tell, you're audible in that. Hey, well, that's what I will check more thoroughly. Uh, she's a human barbarian. As long as you can hear me at the beginning when I do my spiel, then that's fine. I uh, mean, I feel like the rest of it's important, too, to be fair. <laughs> no, no, just the I know what really. you were getting. <laughs> I, I, mean, like, I like the idea of it. Yeah, we, you just get look, the intro. Look, you're audible then, after in the that, intro spiel 30 minutes in and at the two-hour mark. I can check more later. I, I don't think we need to be. I think fair. that's good, yeah. Probably pretty conclusive. Literally, it was just that I I was I, I was inaudible when I launched this, and I couldn't remember checking if I was yeah, audible no, yesterday. Yeah, no, totally before. fair. Um, uh, Nikki's not with us again uh, this week, uh, uh, various reasons. Um, but we return to the world of Grand Terra, where last we left off, uh, Gint tried to shoot Carolina for reasons. Yeah, that was a bad decision. There were reasons involved. <laughs> there was a line of reasoning. It wasn't just random. Um, why you don't hand a teenager a gun usually <laughs> hey the teenager with the sword didn't stab back uh, Carolina disappeared from the the location that they were at and they were they were uh, uh, researching uh, demons in, in a library uh, the gun was confiscated by the paladins of this library because it was the library of Elliot Arathis who weren't going to let somebody just unload weaponry in their library Probably Even smart. though no one seemed Usually to be Usually not a good idea. Now um, they're going to have a rule that says no guns in the library. <laughs> and everybody's going to be like, hey, I wonder what happened here. I wonder who yeah. the fuck was that made them have to have this rule. Uh, but... Some of us are perfect, perfectly capable of not discharging our firearms in the, in the public library. But you all... Uh, uh, Ariel doesn't live in Texas. <laughs> You all. I, there were two routes that joke was going. <laughs> Either America or sex. 
Uh, you all will pick up with the group of you still in the library because yes. you hadn't actually left yet. So um, we had just left off with Gint explaining his reasoning, which was that Carolina was very standoffish and suspicious. And if I right. was continuing to study in the background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> quietly like... reading books in the background, watching all this unfold. Yep. Sorry. Sorry. I legitimately forgot like the last point of conversation that was. Literally, um... it was get explaining his reason. Mm -hmm. Which was like, Carolina constantly standoffish uh being very evasive and at the point where uh uh they were trying to put off confirming whether or not we all had the same vision Gent just fired yep <clears throat> okay we are understanding why that wasn't a good idea yes Oh, indeed. All right. Fuck. Today's been a day. As oh, been. and the uh, the fiend hunter had already taken his leave, right? Yeah, yes. the fiend hunter's already gone. By this point? Definitely. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You guys Bolshazar. studied really quick. The fiend hunter's like, got it. All right, let me know when you're ready to do thing and left. Yeah. Um. But then tomorrow... Uh, is still my uncle coming over and maybe giving us a job? You guys going over to your uncle. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Got it. Thank you for... <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Um, he told you to meet you yes, uh, at, the... At, the Legion, at the Legion mm -hmm. headquarters, yeah. Yep. So... Is this something that we try and take care of quickly, then, before we have to go meet your uncle? Do you think that we could get this done with today, knowing your how, knowing your compound? Also, with it being towards the evening, no. I don't know if there's enough time, but I don't know how long your fiend hunters will be staying in town either. Did I get the impression until they until they were told it was time to go? Uh, they, you didn't really give them an impression of time, so you don't know how long they're willing to wait. Mm -hmm. Didn't you, though, ask about that? Uh, Sorry. no, he, uh, Valdeth asked if they were, if they could stay for a job. They said yes. And mm -hmm. then after getting the information of the job, they said, all right, let us know when you're ready. Uh, which doesn't really give you an impression of how long they're going to wait yeah. until they. But I did. Up. I I did ask if they would be willing to wait in the city for yeah. for 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 until we were ready to do this. Yeah, which isn't a time frame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if if for instance, if you take a month, they'll probably be gone by then. <laughs> but I feel like a couple of days is reasonable. Potentially, yeah. So, if we can't do this today. We'll do what we can today and lay the groundwork. And if we have the time tomorrow, as much as we can tomorrow as well. But if we can't do it, then the day after. Well, then probably rest for the evening and Tanya, what time are we supposed to meet your uncle? Uh, he didn't really give a time. Um, probably in the morning. Morning it is, then. Oh. Okay. We may have um, to work quickly if the job he's offering us is any kind of time-sensitive and important enough that we can't just say 
we're busy at the moment, we'll have to delay it. Okay. Well, we'll know that once we hear about it. All right. Ariel, can you try and find Carolina? You're good at finding people, right? It's your whole before all this. I'm started. good at finding people, yes. Yeah. Am I good at finding people who who have unexplainable powers? Didn't you like track Which down an expert? They have not bothered exactly to yes. Yeah. I did. I absolutely did. Mm -hmm. That was a methodical process that took weeks of investigation and talking to people. Okay. And I don't I don't have I'm not a cleric, I don't have the ability to say where is the barbarian? And then suddenly I know where the barbarian is. Oh, okay. I can ask around, but the, the contacts that I normally have are not, probably not the people who are going to happen to know where she went. I mean, if I were to take a guess, Geist Koenig probably has a method of tracking down all of his trainees. Yeah. If we really need to. It's just like good, that Titania's understanding idea. of anybody's abilities is like, you can do X, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, we have no you understanding of the process. Now, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I can't do it, but someone else might be able to. I, can, oh. I could absolutely track Carolina down given enough time. We don't have the level of time that I need. Okay. I might... Um, Go. It's very possible she might just Be back come home. back. Yeah. Knowing Catalina's commitment to her job, I suspect she won't be gone for too long. Right. I had an idea. Okay. Never but mind. Stop having those. <laughs> if we... <laughs> <laughs> they don't go well. Historically, they're bad. It, this is, yes, this is a very bad one, but I'm not telling you. <laughs> it's fair. Yeah. But if we really needed to contact Catalina immediately, I suspect Geist Koenig would know how to do that. Yes. Geist Koenig would absolutely tell the people who tried to shoot one of his trainees where they are. <laughs> that's, I did. that's exactly who that person is. <laughs> I mean, that relies on Carolina explaining that, oh yeah, one of my nobles shot me. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, okay. Uh, so, still, it's still early. You could stop by there. Uh, it's not early. It's not early at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's early. It is evening. <laughs> The sun's just set. It's, it's early. What in the name of God is wrong with you? <laughs> like, really? For which God? <laughs> All right. Big odds. I try to be non specific so that way I don't offend my own or the back of my head sensibilities. Oh, is that who E is, by the way? What? You, your letter. Oh, yes, yes. I feel that only appropriate. Anyways, um, what are we doing now, Captain? At this point, if there's any preparations we can make for the job that we currently have to deal with, and we have the time, do them now. If not, get some rest. We have a meeting in the morning and preparations to make after that. If you need to have a shouting match with me, we'll do it back at the base. Can I oh, well. ask Geist Koenig? Just in case she's not there. You what? 
Go ask Geis oh. Koenig. I'm asking Valdeth. Got it, yeah. Uh, where would he would he wouldn't be at the Forgotten Night by now, would he? No, he'd probably be at his office. His office is in the tower? In the clock tower, yeah. Which level are we on right now? Uh, you're currently in... Uh, Reborn district. district, right? No, you're currently yeah. in the Temple yep. District. Or Temple. The temple, yeah. temple. Mm-hmm. yeah. So that's which layer? Uh, da, 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 da. It's just below. It's the layer... Uh... Celesti. Celesti, I believe. Celesti. Yeah. It's the one just below the we- where uh, uh, Nosha. Yep. Uh, I'd better go do yes, that. Celesti. So, uh, the the clock tower in Gentis is where yeah. Koenig's. Okay, so it's the same. I'd, I'd better head up to Gentis and talk to Koenig if we need to. Down but... to Gentis. Um, wait. Yeah. Gentis is the bottom layer. Sorry, you said, yeah. you, you said Gentis in... The clock tower in Gentis is his. Yes, there are two clock towers in the city. There's oh. clock tower in Gentis and there's a clock tower in Lex. Okay. Sorry. You know, so efficient for the needing to know the time function of the uh you can see morning, these, you afternoon. can see these clock towers from like you can see the clock tower in Gentis from all the way in like the clock on the clock tower is eye level with Nosha. That's how big the okay. clock towers are. That is fair. <laughs> but I live next to a town with a prominent clock tower. I can't read it from two blocks away. No. I'm not entirely convinced that at any scale it would be legible from two layers away. It's more about audible. (laughs) (laughs) That also is true. Well, I'll be returning to the company house then. I'll see you all there. All, all of the clock towers also serve as airship docks, so yeah. <laughs> that's the other thing. The, uh, the, clock, the clock tower is in the layer where our company house is, so we'll head, we'll all head to the company house if we don't have anything else to do right now. And if Catalina isn't there, I'll go talk to Geist Coney. So probably, and he's gonna pick up his gun on the way out. <clears throat> you pick up your gun. There is a there is an admonishment about the use of firearms within a holy within a holy building, specifically within the library. Uh, you get a lecture. It's a very intense lecture. It's a very short lecture. Uh-huh. And the entire time you're getting this lecture, you are staring at the effigy of Elian Arathus behind the paladin. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yep. Elian Arathus, also the god of lectures. Oh, good to know. Mm. <laughs> the, I chose my deity well. <laughs> well, god of lecture, because if you need to be lectured twice, you're probably dead. <laughs> like I said. <laughs> this makes um, so much sense. <laughs> but uh, you eventually get out of there with your weapon returned. Uh... Are you walking back down, taking an air cab, taking a boat? Gent's walking. So Gent will get there tomorrow. <laughs> uh, we can take a boat. Well, that's what I recommend a boat. We will walk with Gent. If you don't mind. I appreciate it. I think I need some time alone. Okay. So a boat. <laughs> <laughs> yep, boat. And I will mentally command Mal to just stay out of as best as he can out of eyesight, but just keep an eye on Gen. All right. Uh, so it'll cost you five silver per person that's taking a boat against walking. So no no money required. Uh, Jack, go ahead and give me a D100 roll. Okay. Since you're walking in the evening, you guys uh-huh. get a random chance of a thing happening. Getting mugged. Did you say five silver? Yeah, five silver. Yeah. 
That's a 40. <laughs> All right. Oh, we, we just, just lost Aaron. Okay. I know. Well, wait until that comes back in. <clears throat> so. There they are. Now I need to rearrange everybody. Sorry. Sorry. How dare you? It's gone it from being a problem with my internet connection to just being Zoom. Like the rest mm -hmm. of the internet is fine, but Zoom has frozen. Mm -hmm. okay. Which is less troubleshootable than, oh, my internet's down. With a 40, Gent, you make it home fine. Uh,. The, oh. the, you, you, you. There are a few guard patrols that you sort of that you come across, but no, no, no significant criminal activity in your path. Uh, those of you, that, the rest of you, get home. So get Gent's going to take a few hours to get back. The rest of you get back within an hour. Um, and as you return, Duran is waiting. You know, on his couch, reading a newspaper. Welcome back, lords and ladies. Uh, there's some mail on the table for you. I'll definitely go check the mail. Yeah. Uh, there is one letter addressed to Ghent and one letter addressed to the Steelhearts. I'll definitely open the letter addressed to the Steelhearts. Uh, it says... You know, I'm surprised these didn't just nail us while we were in the street or on the boat. We're in violation of the HOA. You can tell from the way they're you can tell from the way they're addressed that they would be the like care of the Steelhearts Company House, so it would go straight there rather than going straight to you. Magic's weird. It's all on how you address it. It'd be kind of inconvenient if you always had to nail people with your e mail, even yeah. if it was like so something you, that really can, needed to go to the house you can now read the letter in chat feel free to read it out loud if you so desire is it well if nobody else is going to we have listeners i don't know if william wants to read it or if i should I, I I've got it. I was just, I was just reading it myself. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's just there was a there were about three seconds of complete silence. <laughs> I gave as we're all well, this was not noted. It is definitely from Carolina in a clear and obvious way. Whatever the letter based customs related to. That <laughs> I just like that. I just set that up and then nobody took it for like three seconds. I was waiting. <laughs> you were yeah. waiting. Yeah. To him and me concern, I expected more professional. Oh, I can tell you this is from. I expected more professionalism. <laughs> I will be taking a vacation day. If you've not forgotten, I'll be available for our meeting tomorrow. I have no idea why you feel any inclination to trust glowing eyes from visions that hijack that ether. Please consider me a traitor if that'll settle your mind. Not for anything I've done, but simply because what are you or such things is more dangerous than any traitor. Our contact with the Reefborn recommends the blood pact expert he previously recommended. <sighs> okay, well. That's all that. And I'm going to guess, she says, looking at the other letter, that that one is from Catalina, specifically addressed to Ghent. What are you saying mm -hmm. that the to whom it may concern was not quite obvious, was too vague? <sighs> Very well. Well, I'm going to go out. Of course you are. Be careful. Of course you won't. See you in a bit. Where are you going, Tanya? Bye. Well, first, I step out in the garden. I close the door. Okay. I wait to see if anyone follows me, because damn it, you all. Does anybody care to follow Tanya at this point? No. 
big round of yeah. nose. Beautiful. My, my, my hawk is already following someone else. <laughs> exactly. Ariel is completely out of fucks to give at this particular moment. So right. she can find if a princess if gets kidnapped or, or, you know, anything, that's not on her. <laughs> Sweet. In that case, um, I'm going to head. I'm actually going to go. Uh, I'm going to lean over the garden wall. It's a fence. And I'm going to use speak with plants again. Okay. Then talk to the weird, the, the, uh, the rose, the animated rose bush or whatever. The rose golem. It's still there, yes. The rose golem. Yes. Hey. Hello. Hello. I was gonna go wander around. Do you want to join me? Busy. Busy. Taking but care nothing's of growing right now. Plants. It's all dark. The Things sun's grow not out. in dark. All right. Dark is when they grow because they're no longer collecting. <laughs> I know that. Titania does not know that. Titania's Tatanya... a fucking mushroom druid. She knows that... damn well things grow in the dark. Not flowers. <laughs> and there are no mushrooms in that garden. It's all pretty and shit. Uh... Specifically, so Titania is a spore druid. <laughs> My god. And... I'm gonna head out uh... And go down to the gin and tonic again, I think. All right. So that's on the same layer, right? Yeah, it's in Gentis. That's still in gin. You, you head to the gin and tonic. To the gin and tonic. Yep. You have to, you have to really pronounce that silent D. <laughs> gin. Yep. Gin and tonic. How much money are you spending at the gin and tonic? Well, I have <laughs> 15 gold, 8 silver, 7 copper. Um, I don't. I already paid in for the funds. We're good till the end of the month. Um, uh, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try some. I love that Tanya spends money like I do. What? I said, I love that Tanya spends money like I do. Bills are paid. (laughs) Yep. 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 (laughs) I feel that. Yep. Um, how much are because I think I had gotten before the cheapest thing that was on the menu, and I'm I yeah. don't have written down uh, how much that was. I think it was like five silver, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, five silver a for a glass, gold? but it was like gold for a bottle. It was like two gold for a bottle. Two gold for a bottle. Okay. Yeah. For the, of the that was the star that was the uh, the 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 star brew. Okay, star brew. Yeah, mm. seven, seven bottles, man. Uh, if you wanted no. something, if you wanted something more interesting, there are a variety of more interesting bottles. I want something that. more interesting. What? How, how, how much more interesting? So they range. The bottles range from things that look fairly simple and like normal wine and normal mm-hmm. alcohol, like Star Brew, which is it has like a starscape in it, but it's still in a bottle. Yeah. Uh, they range from that to there is one that looks like the bottle it the, like like there's there's one bottle of wine you see on the on the on the on the shelf that looks like it is made of obsidian Ooh. and has this faint lava like glow emanating Ooh. from through the darkened casing Ooh, that looks that looks like they go they, they go from looking like wine to Ooh. looking like Elements. Ooh. That drink might be only for people with fire resistance. Yeah. Only one way to find out. Yeah. I'm gonna go for the very interesting side of things. Uh yeah. Um how much would be a glass of that? I Pointing at the, 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 yep. the obsidian bottle? Yes. Uh, one glass would be one gold. All right. I will put a gold down. The, the 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 proprietor the proprietor of the of the uh, of the gin and tonic who is uh, Mori the Mori yep Mori. Um, <laughs> uh, they 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 sort of gesture 
and an earth elemental sort of rises up behind the bar, reaches up, grabs it, pulls it down, sets it on the table. Uh, from its uh, uh, raises up its left hand, and the stone from the palm of its left hand erupts up into a sort of a a jagged cup that it then takes its right hand and sort of shapes into a sturdier vessel and it pulls off and sets down the table in front of you. Ooh. Pops the uh, uh, pops the uh, what looks like an obsidian cork out of the bottle of the drink and pours. And as it pours, it looks like it looks like if liquid had the same like uh, 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 physical properties as fire, mm. like this, this sort of this, this, there's it's very obviously some sort of liquid pouring out. But as it hits the as it hits the bottom of the cup, it sort of steams up in this uh, in this sort of almost gaseous like uh, consistency, and sort of the vapors begin to spiral around inside the cup, the this stone cup as it's been poured into it. Uh, eventually. You've been pouring glass pouring up. very thin magma. <laughs> uh, 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 puts it back, corks it back, and as it does, the this gas uh, ignites, and there's just a quick spiral of flame before it settles down into this ruby red liquid in the bottle, in, in the cup, which is then slid over towards you by the earth elemental. Ooh, so she's been staring rapidly at this and lift it up and take a step. Constitution saving throw with disadvantage. Okay. Uh, here we go. Disadvantage. You know, eventually I get to a point where I can't be poisoned. I'm excited <laughs> for that point. Uh, constitution. There it is. <laughs> That's a natural one. So a two. Uh, all righty. So as you take your drink of Furbrow, uh, you, uh, uh, there is this heat is the first thing you sort of notice as it comes down. It's kind of like a cinnamon alcohol, but way, mm. sh- but way stronger. Mm, um, mm. it's got this sort of, there's this, there is this sweet kind of uh, initial foretaste and then it's almost immediately followed by a, a by a spiciness uh, that just fills you up and you feel like you are being heated internally um, from a fire in your gut as you drink this uh, it's still still has this sweet aftertaste to it though uh, as it goes down and you feel you feel like you're like you're burning but it doesn't hurt uh, mm. like you're on fire, but it doesn't hurt. And you just sort of, as you, as you breathe out licks of flame, just <laughs> out of your mouth. <laughs> if you're going for the German there, it's for your brow. For your brow. <laughs> That's it. Ooh, that is exciting. Do you have one that has water in it? Certainly, uh, Maury, Maury says as they uh, tur- turn their hand and the earth elemental sort of collapses back down into the ground only to be replaced by a water elemental uh, and who sort of goes over and you see uh, you see a um, you see a, uh, a bottle that is it, it's, it looks almost like it was grown as a shell you know, it's sort of this 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 mm. naturally organic, or this naturally occurring sort of shell that has grown up into a bottle shape, and you can't really see through it because bottle. Uh, the water elemental grabs it, uh, uh, pops open, pops it open, pours it into a oh, what's it called? It was um, a shaker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, pours it into a shaker al- uh, along with a few other things from behind the bar and just sort of absorbs the shaker into its body and you sort of see it travel around and up and down throughout the water elemental uh as it uses as it uses uh the arm that initially absorbed it while it's while it's going around to reach down and pick up a, a fairly normal looking glass 
uh, put that glass in front of you. Eventually, the shaker pops out its other hand. It opens it up and just pours the contents into the glass. And it's this... Uh, it's this slightly fizzy turquoise color that seems to have sort of an inner glow to it. And and, and that one will also be another gold. Okay, yeah. yeah. I'll put a gold down for that. Um, well. So I'm going to do something really stupid. Um, <laughs> Try two taking... different elementally imbued alcohols in one night? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was going to say, you're going to try something... Just now, you're going to start trying something. Yes, just now. So I don't feel like this is what was meant by take water with your alcohol, but I don't actually <laughs> know what this is, so I could be wrong. This totally counts. I'm going to say so. Uh, I'll take uh, a swallow of the, of the fire and keep that in my mouth and then grab another of the water. Let's see yes. how that combines. It's so curious. Elements in your mouth. Yes. So make another constitution saving throw disadvantage. Yep. Uh huh. I should just leave it on disadvantage right now. Uh... <laughs> Trust me, the compound interest of this hangover is going to be amazing. Oh, yeah. The seven. Yeah. Sweet. Uh,. Uh, <laughs> this is Mirbrow, by the way. Um, the uh, uh, so this one you sort of separating out the taste in your mouth. You still get that cinnamon spice, that cinnamon uh, uh sweetness uh from the first one. This one is a lot saltier, uh, and so you get this you get this interesting sort of drying sensation as you drink it uh far less sweet a little bit more bitter uh and so you get this you get this sort of combination of salty bitterness from the mere brow and this spicy sweetness from the f uh, the Führer brow um mixing in your mouth and gold and there is this interesting sort of whirlpool of sensation as you drink it down, as your body is simultaneously on fire but not hurting, and drowning but not drowning, like you have this, you have this wet pressure on top of this burning warmth that is combining in you at the moment. Meanwhile, Ghent arrives back at the at the at the company house. So yeah, walk in, probably head straight for the workshop and start fixing the misfired gun. There is a letter on the table for you as you pass. I'll grab that. Mm. Flip it back and forth and then open it up. Mm. All right. I will send you the contents of that letter. Okay. No, I was muted. I said I grabbed the typo fixed version. Oh, okay. I was just going to whisper it to him, but there you go. <laughs> Sorry. That's fine. The thing that Aaron put in chat is the thing that you read. Okay. Again, feel free to read it out loud if you want, or not, because you're the only one reading this one. <laughs> Gent looks at that, folds it up, sticks it in his coat pocket. <laughs> Exhales heavily and goes to fix his gun. <laughs> Give me a Tinker's Tools check. Okay. Twelve. <laughs> uh, you find that it's fairly uh, thanks to the modifications that your uh, that your niece did to this. It's fairly uh -huh. easy to fix it, uh, cool. and it doesn't take you more than a couple minutes. Excellent. <laughs> Okay. <sighs> Heavy sigh, and then given what he has on hand, uh, Ghent is going to try and do some recreational research on ammo composition, if at all possible. He, uh, can I make a 
Are you trying to Did plan make... out the construction of some ammo? Plan out the construction of some ammo, specifically if there's anything he could do to add uh, poison, cold, or... Uh, yeah, poison or cold damage, or anything that might go explodey. Okay. Um, yeah, give me an intelligence check with your Tinker Tools. Oh, no, okay. Tinker Tools with intelligence, I should say. Tinkers with intelligence. Boop. 23. Yeah, you could. There's a few ways you could add uh, those properties to your bullets. Um, okay. There are. I assume it would probably require some specialized resources. Yeah, uh, you figure with about for poison, um, you could probably do it for about ten golds worth of uh, herbs. Okay. Um, you don't think you'd be able to gather them from the herb from the garden in that you have right. here. You'd have to gather them out in nature, but you could probably infuse some poison from specific herbs into your bullets. Um, for uh, any sort of magical element like cold, mm -hmm. uh, outside of acquiring some very specific ingredients from like the frozen wastes, uh, you'd need magic. So you'd need somebody who can specifically infuse magic, which would be an okay. artificer or a wizard. Um... Uh, and uh, same thing for uh, with exploding with explosions. The trick with exploding bullets is that you have to be able to make them not explode when you fire the gun. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Meaning that conventional methods are far more dangerous and more expensive than magical methods. Uh, so you're you, you could you could spend about a hundred gold per bullet to make a physical like a mechanical bullet that explodes when it hits a target. Or you could spend much less to get somebody mm -hmm. to enchant a bullet that explodes when it hits the target. Cool. Awesome. Good to know. Uh, and then after that, he will go to bed. <laughs> All right. Titania, how late are you staying out at the gym and how many more drinks are you having? Um... You are getting progressively more drunk, by the way, because you keep yes. your constitution. Yes. Yes. Uh, she is attempting to pace herself, so not much. Like she's gonna finish those two, sort of alternating between, because that's pleasant and exciting. Um, and then is gonna head back. Right. Are you gonna buy a bottle while you're there? Ooh. Yeah. Sure. One of those bottles is ten gold. <laughs> 10? Okay. Yeah. Mm, I'm going to get some of the fire one, because that mm. makes you breathe fire, and that's that's fun. I am the last, the last, I saved the last glass is going to be uh, the fire one. I am going to step outside and attempt to breathe fire into the air. I'm just really curious it's not really, if I can it's, be a dragon. It's, it's not anything significant. I mean, to your Darn current it. drunk sensibilities, it certainly feels like you're yeah. a dragon. Yeah, uh-huh. But to, any per to any, uh, anybody else's uh, sort of uh, uh, recollection, it's just wisps of flame. It's not like any substantial gout okay. of fire. It's the kind of thing a dragonborn does on a daily basis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll grab a bottle. So 10 gold? Yep, ten gold for a bottle cool. of fitter brow. Red dragonborn just kind of hops too loud, and that's bottle the of dragonfire. <laughs> and I'll head back. All right. It takes you a little while to get back because you're fucking drunk. Yep. Uh, <laughs> but you all, and your various places, unless anybody's doing anything else specifically tonight. Right. You all get your long rest and go to sleep. Ooh. So anything you do on a long rest can be done. I'm Sweet. taking both of the infusions for myself mm -hmm. because I don't give infusions to the people who stab me or shoot at me. <laughs> and Tanya's Tan changing seasons again. Tanya, you wake up. Yep. With it feels like there is a second skull inside your skull, Ooh. just slightly smaller, but not small enough to fit. So it's pushing on the inside of yours. Ooh. And every movement 
or sound or light or sensory input at all adjusts that slightly. Yep. Okay. Gonna reach out and trying to find a thing of water. <laughs> There's usually one there. Probably. There does not appear to be one there at the moment. Hey Val. Hey Valda. Hey. Yes. Hey. That hurts, hey. by the way. Yeah. Touching your ear, touching the link pearl, that hurts. Can you get me some water? Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Val Leth will go and retrieve a ewer of water. You can hear the floorboards creaking as somebody's walking around, and that hurts too. Mm. Just like I dis or if I discorporate, would that be better? <laughs> you don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Can't have a for I can't have a skull of your gaseous form. It's true. <laughs> it's true. It's very true. I'm not gonna so, try it yet. That this... requires you do have to say something and that feels like it's gonna hurt. Yeah, oh yeah, so, that would definitely hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a there is a increasing level of pain as the sounds get closer, but eventually Valdeth is at your door with a with a ewer of water. Hmm. And now here's the question: Does Valdez knock? <laughs> yes, actually, <laughs> loudly, <Very> loudly. <laughs> it's as if somebody has decided to use your inner, your upper sinuses as the membrane for a drum. When Fuck! Valdez knocks, <laughs> after getting that response, Valdez opens the door and walks in. Oh, ow! It's a blast of cold air because Titania's gone winter again. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I tell everyone, and she's saying this loudly, like at like slightly higher than speaking volume. Okay, I'll 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 go <laughs> missed. Damn it. <laughs> Theater voice. Yeah. No, I'll go missed. How I'll long does it take you to go spell. missed? Uh it's an action. All right. So concentration yeah. up to one hour. As you, I may not be able to concentrate very well right now, which is totally you, fine. You 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 begin to feel the vibrations <laughs> of, of of Valdez's voice just reverberating inside your skull in an increasing like pressure threshold. <laughs> you just gas, <laughs> and it stops hurting because you yep. don't have the physical form to hurt anymore. Oh, that's better. And Bella doesn't stop talking though. She knows exactly why that happened. And this is why I tell everyone to 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 drink water while they're taking in alcohol. And she sets the ewer on the table. You see a bottle that looks like it's made of obsidian, with that looks <laughs> like it has magma inside it on the nightstand nearby. Valet looks at the bottle. Especially magic alcohol. Sets it back down. <laughs> I. Just, I, I I attempt to go into the water because that feels like a good idea. I don't I don't want to hear. I feel like that might like because when you go underwater, you can't hear people talking at you, and I feel like that's Not with gaseous where I'm form, at. you can't. <laughs> the, the the mist settles around the ewer. Some per, some percentage of it is in the water, but the problem yep. is you can't fit all that mist into the water. Darn it. <laughs> I mean, some percentage of it is probably on the surface of the water, considering. Oh, yeah, yes. it's not. It's not. It's not nearly a deep enough. Fit into it. It's not mm -hmm. nearly a deep enough like vessel of water for you to dive into. Curses. All right. Well, when you're done trying to cure your hangover, and trust me, it's too late to make it go away entirely now. You're not just... without a spell. <laughs> The water, the water will help, but it's not going to go away for a while. So, There's... when you're when you're done doing what you can for that, we have a meeting to go to with your uncle today. 
So in the military district too, you know where there's all that parading and stomping. Yeah, you're going to want to do as much for that hangover as you can, and going to have to live with your bad decisions today. And Valda leaves to go get ready for the day. I recorporate. <laughs> Ugh. And I try and I drink as much of the water as I can and then wait and see if it helps. It doesn't. Shit. See, here's the thing. The the, the trick about hangovers. Yeah. Once you've got the hangover, it's too late. Yep. <laughs> it's the it's the before times where you need the water. Afterwards, this is just the side effect. Cool. It will I eventually. Try. You will. You will eventually rehydrate enough that your body will hurt less. Yeah. But it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. I well, I'm not there yet. So Titania comes down the stairs as something else. What's something that doesn't hear? That feels like a good idea and has like a bigger head. Uh. Not a shark. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, I'm a shark. <laughs> what are the rest of you up to in the morning? Um, while Titania's figuring out what's to do. <laughs> yeah. I swapped out some of my spells, identify for sleep, and... Uh, Agonizer Scorcher for Lightning Bolt. <clears throat> and he's, he, Ethram's just doing his morning stretches and then heads down for breakfast. And my dogs are back barking in the background. <laughs> As they're wont to do. There's fucking nothing. <laughs> and it turns out most things here. <laughs> Ariel will go tremor sense, which could be worse. No, Ariel. Worse. Ariel will go where? <laughs> Sorry, you guys will stop tangenting so hard. <laughs> Ariel's gonna go find Valdez. Okay. All right. It's not hard. <laughs> John, I appreciate the level of amusement that was growing on your face. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. um, Wherever, like when you're getting ready. um, Probably in her room, putting her on for the day. Just a quick knock. Good morning. Under. There's a the sound of pain from the other side of the house from the knocking. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get too much amusement out of that today. It was you and me both. <sighs> Look, I have a question for you. Right away. Preferably not with the gun. <laughs> well, now I just feel insulted. <laughs> I'm kidding. Do you think I'm competent in what I do? I do. Because I had serious cause to question that when as I Admittedly, at a level of frustration that perhaps was a bit, I'm not going to say hyperbolic, because I believe it was a very appropriate level of frustration for the massive amount of cock-ups that occurred in an extremely short period of time in that library. But perhaps a, 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 a overly let's say hysterical expression of it. You 
your reaction was to essentially berate me with an outsider standing right next to you. In that particular instance, I was also experiencing a certain amount of frustration. Understandable. Being hyper aware of the fact there was a conversation that needed to happen exclusively among the party while there was someone that I needed to bring in who was not part of that for a different matter that still needed to be resolved and was highly aware that what I needed to get done was to get them what they needed so they could leave and that previous matter could be discussed. And when I'm trying to get that moving and someone comes back to me that I should derail everything that I've already got trying to move in one position, I was already frustrated. And I admit I snapped rather aggressively. I appreciate that. It's fair. I... No, actually, I believe that's all that needs to be said. I, I think I understand. I, I think we understand each other better now. Thank you. And no matter what anyone else assumes of their positions here among the Griffin Company, as far as I am concerned, you are my second in command. Well, obviously. Any any time we have to divide into two fire teams, you're in charge of the second team, as far as I'm concerned. Understood. I I trust and respect your capacity both as a mercenary and as a leader. Thank you. I just needed to not be second guessed in that particular moment. <laughs> that is also fair. Um and I will acknowledge that that Aaron judgment. My concern wouldn't even necessarily have been amongst the entire amongst our, our, our company. It was the outside part that particularly bothered me. I was trying to keep that. That's, that's part of the reason I was trying to keep that from happening. <laughs> didn't want the person that I was bringing in to see us panicking about a vision we just had. And I didn't see how it was impossible, based on what was inside, that that wouldn't be seen. As you make that statement, all of you, except for Carolina, for God reasons, damn it, suddenly become aware of a figure watching you, and that you are your awareness is in a darkened room. It's this yellow-eyed figure that has that has spoken to you before. Which I think I said orange-eyed last time. I'm going to publicly correct that. His eyes are yellow. <laughs> um, because I've said them as I've described them as yellow before. The Winchesters are that yeah. way. Go after them. Uh, the yellow eyes staring at you. There is activity behind them, but you're not able to focus on it. It seems your attention is drawn specifically to this figure. It is getting harder to access you at this point. This will be my last transmission for some time. The information you're seeking can be found in the shadow front and the corruption at the heart of the uncharted frontier. You have no reason to trust me, but trust that I would not be expending this amount of power if I did not believe you to be my best and only option. And you're back in your company house, wherever it was you were standing. Like fucking that. <laughs> God damn it! From downstairs, you hear Ethram yell, "That was interesting." <laughs> <laughs> do Do you think it realizes that what it just said was not engendering of trust in any way, shape, or form? I I don't know if it does or not. 
I'll be honest with you. Because it basically just said, I get that you may not trust me, but I really, really need you, and I'm okay with you not trusting me. And just kind of left that open, very open, wide thing of my motives may still be in question, and I don't dispute that. Uh, it's not something we can ignore either way but god damn it no 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 and that's what I hate the most about it <laughs> um, can Ithram uh, go up to his room and start doing a ritual identify on himself to see if he can edit if there's any traces of what just transpired sure he's oh, going to yeah, go so up and do that if there's any traces so I'm going to do the long version of the spell well, I had to drop one spell today, and, and it was I identify. Didn't, <laughs> yeah. didn't have it. was said <laughs> earlier that it re- yeah, right. replaced identify with something else. Uh, <laughs> that, that's always happened. It with always, an equally it's always useful the spell. spell that you take out. That's the one that you need mm-hmm. for the day. Yep. Yeah, the equally yeah. useful spell of sleep. Uh, <laughs> after ten minutes, there is no specific trace of a spell or of an ability that All you right. can access from identify. Okay. We should probably go and make sure the rest of the company didn't, like, you know, pass out in their soup and drown or something like that. Uh, I I'm actually very curious how much that just ruined Titania. <laughs> Titania, <laughs> weirdly, oh, you feel yeah, better. That might have. Exp- oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Weirdly, it like. It feels like something in your ether shifted, and it hurts less. Oh. All right. I'm pulling myself together. I spent a very long time just sitting entirely still, trying to think of animals that would be better than this, and couldn't come up with anything. I contemplated turning to crab, um, because they don't have ears, clearly, because you can't see them. Um, (laughs) That's how that works. Yeah, exactly. Um, but then I probably move really slowly and I, well, that could be fun. Mm. And then stuff happened and now I feel better. So I put on sunglasses, <laughs> darkest pair of sunglasses I have. And Titania, you get the, the door. you get the Hollywood starlet sunglasses where yes, it's like these big exactly round, exactly like, that, almost the size of your face sunglasses. Yep. Uh huh. And her hair is and that Audrey Hepburn, like, mm-hmm. all sort of like brown and white on the ends, like yeah, dead I grass. Feel like kinds of sunglasses are specifically for hangovers. <laughs> yes, these are my hangover sunglasses. Duh. <laughs> So, John, I have a question for you. Yes. Ghent has been asleep this entire time. You're not asleep anymore. Okay. (laughs) You woke up when that vision ended. All right. Ghent will get up, grumbling to himself, cram everything into his bags, load everything up. Cycle down, step out of the bedroom, slam the door, stomp down the stairs. Ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> what? Do- no, 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 no. Push yourself. You went out drinking last night, didn't you? Yes. I have it here still. I like pat my side because I have managed to stash this entire bottle right here. Let me see. Hmm? Let me see. There is a series of it's it's wedged up. Like I've got it like <laughs> I've got some like I imagine she's hooked it somehow inside her bra. <laughs> like you've got you've got like you you've got like the the the, the cap hooked into the side yeah, of your bra uh-huh. and like your your dress and and like corset like yep. holding it tight to your mm-hmm. side. Exactly. How broke are you? You don't notice how bad an idea this is. <laughs> <laughs> or hungover. Come on, give me the bottle, Snow Princess. Mm. No, nah, it's right here. This is mine. Good, and he it. takes it. Mm-hmm. None. I hang on to that. 
<laughs> Athletic Fine. checks from both of you. <laughs> yes. What kind of check? Athletics. Athletics. Uh, I have a plus three. I'm not disadvantaged anymore. No. Okay. Normal. 25. Shit. <laughs> God damn it. I'm going to try anyway. You do that. 16. <laughs> Yeah, you 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 try to hold on to it, but he just like grabs and pulls down rather than out away, and you're not prepared for that, and it just slips out of your fingers. Pops the cork off, takes a sip. Mm. Give me a constitution saving throw disadvantage. Okay. <laughs> this is magic. Seven. <laughs> Your entire world goes a little bubbly. <laughs> and little licks of flame come out of your mouth. Six the cork back in. Well, you're visiting family. I guess it makes sense. <clears throat> Thank you. Take it back. Put it away again. This is a... Kind not, of cracks, not, cracks his neck a little bit, gives you a wink, and heads back downstairs. You, you know that feeling? You, you know that point where you get uh, where you're just drunk enough <laughs> that your body has begun to betray you, but yeah. not drunk mm -hmm. enough that your mind has? Right. Mm -hmm. That's where you're at. So mm -hmm. like, you take a step and your foot doesn't go in the right place. Mm. That was six inches off. Okay. <laughs> hands, oh, wait. hands on the sides of the wall. Oh, wait, I am going to go talk to family. This is going to be miserable. Anyway, I take a drink. Constitution <laughs> say you're throwing disadvantage. <laughs> Gent is headed straight for the kitchen, grabs some water, and definitely and chases that with about... curiosity, have... About a quart of water. Almost parents of the group arrived yet? Like, I feel like they're oh. the ones drinking, but... We're the ones getting the preemptive hangovers. The, so Valdeth, Ariel, and Gent, you hear a thud. Oh, <laughs> uh, what the fuck? I go to go look. Titania is face down on the floor <laughs> with a bottle in one hand. Are you, are you fucking kidding me? I'm headed for water. Valdeth grabs the bottle corks it, and then immediately just, like, pulls the breastplate forward and sticks into the bra of holding. <laughs> <laughs> smart move. Very smart move. Yeah. yeah. Well, how, how many hours, oh, how many hours till I'm meeting? We don't have a time, so that's good. When we go. That's good. We're stopping by a temple on the way? I really think that she should be, I really think that Titania should be Brought just enough to uh, fix, just enough to be conscious, but not enough to be comfortable, sober. <laughs> sober. Yeah. And then she can deal with these fucking ramifications. So you need an herbalist, not a temple. <laughs> Too bad your herbalist is currently unconscious on the floor. <laughs> it's like there are other herbalists in this giant ass city. Oh, absolutely, there are. It's just it's, <laughs> that's the funny thing. Oh, fucking Everstone, give me strength. <laughs> <sighs> well, we need her. We we need her or her her conscious first. So hold on, just a second. Leave. Come back with pitcher of water. Oh yeah, you, you you get woken up in the most unpleasant way, to Tanya. <laughs> you know, I, have you ever have you ever dived into a pool when you have a headache already, and the pool so, water is slightly colder than you expected? No, but I have gone gone under okay. very very cold water. Slightly so, different one. Have you okay. ever have you ever taken a really cold drink just after you've had your teeth cleaned? No. Okay. It hurts. Okay. <laughs> it's real bad. It's it's a com it's a combination of brain freeze and headache. Okay. It's it's because all the t all of your teeth are super sensitive, and now it's really cold. Fuck. <laughs> Sunshine. Yeah, it's like chewing mint gum and then having a glass of ice water, but dialed up to about seventy-five. There you go. 
How are we feeling? Peachy. Now also wet. <laughs> Do we regret the decisions that we've made this morning? Am I still slightly drunk or not at all anymore? Still slightly drunk, yes. No. I was going to say, that, that, so, <laughs> that wakes you up. It doesn't make you yeah, yeah. No. I, It doesn't flush the poison no, out of your doesn't. system. Yes. Also, you can be both drunk and hungover if the yeah. people that, that is I, 100% true. are anything to go by. Very true. It's called Very hair of the dog. Usually that happens when you wake up in the morning, you go, oh shit, I'm hungover, and you reach for a drink. Yeah. Hair of the dog. But but it can also be, yeah, anyway. <laughs> no. Wonderful. Where's the bottle? My sunglasses. Awesome. Well, that looks around on the floor. I have no idea where it went. I do. <laughs> You're never going to find it again. Ever. <laughs> Fine. Where are we? We have a meeting to get to. Great first impressions. I love that Titania is basically like the less the less experienced version of Hayden. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I just find it funny that this time I'm on this side of the of of the 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 the, the dispute between Mara's characters and mine because usually I'm on the other side. Look, you say that there are themes of like reincarnation in Grand Terra at large. There are themes of alcoholism in Grand Terra <laughs> yeah. as we have decided it. It's true. There, there are. There's a lot of alcohol abuse in like, Grand Terra. <laughs> I recall distinctly that there was a point during rebirth, probably, where every single member of the party was an alcoholic. <laughs> One of us was just a drunken master. <laughs> yes, You're I weaponized my alcoholism. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. I'm assuming eventually a lot of you get out of the house. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You all With notice that Ariel driving everyone on, presumably. <laughs> yeah, Titania is a little bit more obviously incapacitated. Get is the one Get is the one who is drunk and is trying very hard to hide it. Mm. But you can tell because there's a moment where Gint tries to take a step forward. Yeah, that's forward. a five. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a moment where Gint tries to take a step forward. And is he hesitates and then shifts his foot to the left a few inches and then steps. <laughs> Gent, do we feel good had, about our life choices this morning? I had one swallow. That shit is lethal. Knowing the drink, yes, it's magic alcohol. You don't take that stuff unless you intend to be drunk. Has anybody notified Carolina that we're going to our meeting right now? He's aware. Oh, all right. She she decided to try and remind us, even though we hadn't forgotten through her letter. So she's aware. Right. Mm. So, should we take the wagon or a cab or? Uh, let's take Both. an air cab. <laughs> uh, sure, we don't want to walk. I think it will be... No, it's fine. I'm not even going to push that. <laughs> so it just gives a smirk. <laughs> you are on the way to section four of Bellicus, which yep. is just a layer up. Um, do you want to stop on the way anywhere, or are you just taking an air cab straight there? I think we're no, just taking an air cab. Of straight there. Gent's not going to object. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's uh, two gold for each for the air cab. Oh. <clears throat> and you head out to Bellicus. Uh, Bellicus, you've, you've, you've all passed through Bellicus a variety of times, but you never spent a whole lot of time 
there. Uh, it is the military. It's the military lair, basically. This is where there are. Um, this is where the 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 headquarters of the Tyrian Legion are. This is where there are barracks, workshops, headquarters. Uh, this is where they construct airships. Uh, there are several airship manufactories uh, up here as well. This is where some of the bigger forges in the city are. Um, this is also they have their own hospital and uh, residences for mil for members of the military for the guard, uh, things like that. This is also where the um, this is not where the guard headquarters is, but this is where most of the guard are trained. Uh, so all the various aspects of the 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 military side of Taram sort of centralize here. Um, the reason, the generally accepted reason that it's the second layer in the city is so that it has the it has it can very quickly react to any sort of incursion from the ground as well as any sort of incursion from the air um, because it has access. It's right there next to the, uh, the airship docks and also has their own manufactories and things. Um, but you head to the military headquarters. The buildings here are all very function over form. Everything, everything tends to be squared uh, squared off with some more with you know the op the the very clear indication that more rooms will be built. Most things here are made out of stone, um, <clears throat> so that it's harder to burn things down and things are more you know more protected. Uh, but eventually you arrive at the Legion headquarters, which is where you would find Legion General Varnabas. <clears throat> The Legion headquarters stand out be mostly because they're the only building here that has a tower, like a proper tower. Uh, most uh, most things are squat and one or two levels, but it's all uniformly leveled, whereas this has like a, a central spire. Um, you arrive, the guards outside ask your business. You inform them that you are here at behest of Legion General Varnabas. Uh, do you use the fact that you have a member of the royal family in tow at the beginning, or do you just sort of let Titania hang out in the back? Titania is not doing any talking at the moment. Okay. It's entirely a at this point. All right. Well, that, that, that actually brings... We don't... Yeah, uh, she doesn't have to talk for us to rely on that name value. I feel like we so, don't need that name value until we need that's it. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, well, you present yourself as the Steelhearts here at the request of Legion General Varnabas. You are led in. Uh, you are led into a war room. Uh, I say a war room because there's more than one. Um, <clears throat> this one in particular has a large table in the middle of the room that is that is a topographic map of the world. Uh, so looking at it, you sort of you can see all of the various continents uh, of the world map <clears throat> and islands and things. <clears throat> with representations of certain cities uh, on it. Uh, Carolina, uh, you'd be already there waiting. So if you wanted to do something before you got there, we can go ahead and do that now. No, no. Okay, Just cool. wanted to clarify that I eventually meet up with yeah, the group. As you all enter the room, you see Carolina standing off to one side. Mm -hmm. Oh, there she yeah. is. Respectful and appropriate nod. <clears throat> uh, Legion General Farnabas, as well as several others that are in sort of the the Legion uh, armor plating, are in the room having a conversation. Carolina, they've been talking about. Um, they've mostly been talking about redeployment strategies relating to the uh, the the uh, light wall, and right. you know, getting getting that getting those troops cycled more often than they had been previously, considering the uh, considering the circumstances of the previous breach, um, and trying to figure out ways to secure that um so nothing nothing that seems to to your mind that seems to have been directly related to what they're going to ask of you but as you all enter <clears throat> ah welcome steelhearts come uh gather around as he, he he just sort of casually indicates for you to come to the table approach mm-hmm mm -hmm. 
As you are all aware, this is the world. It says indicating the world map, Mahor, and specifically our continent of Sinisikar. The corruption emanating from the heart of the uncharted frontier, he says as he sort of uses a uses a, a measuring stick to sort of indicate the uncharted frontier to the south of Taram, uh, has affected not just Taram, but also our neighboring regions of Dunisia and Luxuria. Or, uh, yeah, uh, or Dunisia and Ilanora. He says as he indicates to those two things. However, the corruption spreading into Dunisia stopped as it entered their most fertile and populous regions, indicating the southern, uh, the southern end of it. Uh, so, on the continent of Sinisikari, there are three nations. There's Taram, Dunisia, and Ilanora. Uh, Dunisia has very recently collapsed uh, from an, uh, economically um, because the corruption... Dunisia sort of exists along a border of uh of sand and forest uh specifically their territory extended into the forest that would then become the the uncharted frontier uh, uh to the west of of Taram between Taram and Ilanora and then up to the coast uh of the the channel that that runs between Sinisikara and Leftheria the two continents that are on this side of the this this hemisphere of the world um and all of their uh, 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 agriculture and production takes place along that forested border, which, as you can see, looking at the world map that's being presented to you, has been consumed by the corruption from the the uh, the internet frontier. It seems that it will. It seems that it has not traveled further into the desert regions of Dunisia, which would be where the capital and the like are, but it wrecked enough of the country that it was that it caused an economic collapse of the nation. Our neighbors in Dunisia sought refuge with the Ilinoran nation, uh, as the corruption can't quite reach them without having to go through the desert areas in which it seems unwilling to do so. That's how we've been able to keep it at bay with a limited light wall. They have recently reached out to us requesting military aid in an endeavor to seek out the truth behind that corruption, finding the source, and determining what would be the best manner with which to deal with it. Now, we cannot currently pledge any military might to them, as it requires it would require a great deal of financial sacrifice to move that to move a, a number of our military troops both away from the light wall and our own national defense across their la their former lands and into Illinora to coordinate however along with private along with certain private organizations originating from Illinora we have pledged to send them three griffin companies that would aid them in their request if you would be interested we would pay you to be one of those three. Handful of questions. Ask away. Well, six sending. We have not yet we've not yet nailed down the other two Griffin companies. We're still vetting through many, and not many want not many are willing to relocate for the period of time this would require. How are we getting there? We'll be chartering you a ship that'll take you down through the channel around to Luxuria in Illinora. Which is where the uh, which is where the displaced prince of Dunisia is currently residing. How long do you expect this to be? The journey from one side of the continent to the other is a matter of <clears throat> two and a half to three months, depending on where you're traveling to and where you're traveling from. You'll be joining up with the prince of Dunisia in Ilanora, and then journeying with him and his allies. <clears throat> back into the uncharted frontier through his territory and thus circumventing the light wall in Tehran. This should take anywhere between at, at very at the minimum around three months before you're back in Tehran. Will our expenses for maintaining our, our guild hall be taken care of while we're gone? That is included in the price that we are giving you. Yes. When would we when would we be expected to leave? Tomorrow. Uh, 
tomorrow. I look, I, I look I look over my shoulder at specifically Ariel and Ghent. Do we think we can handle what we need to in this city by then? Ghent just nods. <laughs> Probably. I look back. What is the pay? He uh, nods towards one of the adjutants who uh, moves into a different room and wheels out a chest. Uh, I say wheels out because he's using like a like a you know a, 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 a dolly. A, a dolly. <laughs> uh, opens it up. Five thousand gold. Which is heavy. Yeah. <laughs> no shit. What are the steel hearts specifically expected to accomplish on this task? You are to provide any and all assistance necessary to the Prince of Tunisia in in analyzing and in, in discovering and, if possible, ending the source of the threat of the corruption within the uncharted lands. I look over my shoulder at Ariel. Any other questions you think of? Particularly comes to mind at the moment. I look over at the rest of the group, including Ariel. Any objections? How many people have gone off and done this and not come back? None, None yet. that we've sent. Yeah, but Denisia, or whatever. We he sort of thinks for a second. Unfortunately, since the economic collapse of the country of the nation, it has not been it has not made any sort of financial, economic, or security sense to have uh operatives within the Denisian nation's embassy in Illinora. We have no idea how many operations they have sent prior. We know only that they are requesting our help for this one. And you got no other volunteers. There are other Griffin companies, certainly. But you operated very... You handled yourself very well in the operation that you did for us previously, and so you were on my short list of Griffin companies to ask first. I look across to the rest of the group. Are there any objections to this task? None here. No. I do have a question though. Has there been any confirmed threats that we may have to look out for if we do head to this area? Are there individuals like we came across at the light wall? The all of the all of the mask. all of the information that we have is from the is from the offense at the light wall that we've experienced thus far. We would like, in addition to your aiding with the with the Dunisian uh, objective, any information that you could acquire. Thus far, the Shadow Front has been largely an unknown quantity. Yeah. I think we can accept this task, though. We have some business to accomplish within the city before we leave tomorrow, and we'll need all the time that we can get today to accomplish that. But if you could let us know when you've determined who our compatriots will be on this task. Certainly. And if you accept, you will be paid up front, so that you may use the so that you may use the money to finance your trip and set aside any other endeavors you need. That is appreciated. And Valdeth, my, most of you can probably assume they they're not afraid of paying you up front because if you decide to gyp them, they have the might of the milit of the Tyrian military to crush you. So yeah, I, I literally <laughs> live in their city. They're they're not they're not too terribly afraid of people taking their money and just running. <laughs> yeah. Very well. On behalf of the Steelhearts, we accept. Very well. We'll have the funds forwarded <laughs> to your company house. 
Thank you. You'll be set to, or uh, uh, you will be set to depart tomorrow at dawn, from the docks, and he'll list you. He'll give you a dock number. No. As soon as we've well. as soon as we've confirmed the other Griffin companies that will be joining you, we will let you know. Perfect. Dismissed. Valid nod, salutes, leads the rest of the group out. Huh. The doors close behind you. <laughs> All right. One twelve. All right. Well. If that counts accurate, that's going to be 728 gold, three silver, three copper for everyone. Counting the 630 we'll need to cover the next three months. It's enough! There's a reason I keep the ledgers. (laughs) (laughs) No, Aaron was just curious if it was a fair daily pay rate for the risk, which (laughs) clear even dividing it among everyone, even accounting for other expenses, it probably is. Oh yeah, 50 gold a day, mm-hmm. that's pretty fair. Well, 50 yeah. gold a day for the group, which shakes out to about 10 gold a day per person, yeah. which is still a reasonably high pay rate. Yeah, mm-hmm. that is some impressive hazard pay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> when you consider D&D world economies. Mm-hmm. Also, adventurers. Like that is yep. essentially the gimmick of adventurers is the yeah. impressive hazard pay. And if, and if you think about it, they're basically going to be paying out if if the other two companies are getting the same amount, they're basically going to be paying out fifteen uh fifteen thousand gold in order to have a problem that they are very significantly having an issue with dealt with by another nation. So yep. mm-hmm. <laughs> They're making out like bandits on this. <laughs> the kind of bandits that don't blow themselves up with their own door traps. Correct. <laughs> Unless uh, we're the door trap. Uh, I suppose we notify Bishon then. It's time for us to get this job done. Do we think we can get your mother out of that compound quickly? We can certainly try. We know the room she stays in. Do we think we can get there from the outside? Based on what I saw on the interior of the estate? You'd have to go through the wall rather than over it. Because it's patrolled, or uh, the wall's been uh, raised since the last time you climbed it. Mm-hmm. Actually, no, you have spider climb shoes. You could do it, say. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could do it. Yeah, <laughs> but nobody else could. Okay, I could get up there, but I could. I mean, if you turned into something small and I put you in my pocket, you mean? Yep. Or, you know, turn into mist or whatever. I also could, but that. When I do that. My, an amount my, of yeah. When I do that, my, my, my preference is no longer for stealth. Fair. Shall we enlist your, your uh, nephew's aid on this? Nieces? Yes, probably. Mm-hmm. You recall she was heading out of the city. Right. Oh, that's right. No, she's gone, actually. This is going to be all us. Did Baishan ever get us a list of locations that would be more appropriate for doing this job? Uh, yes. Most of them are uh, 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 most of them are underground at the moment. Uh, the list is primarily, if you get them into uh, if you get them into a a um, a sewer conflux that'd be the ideal place because it's very it's fairly restricted all the entrances are very easily monitored and if anything goes wrong you can sort of keep it closed off it's there con- it, it, it's, it's containable yeah it's mm-hmm. containable mm-hmm. uh outside of that remote places that would be outside the city is there a entrance to the sewers near 
the compound. Oh yeah, there's a there's a there's a I mean not necessarily near the compound, but there is a there are sewer entrances on every level. So theoretically, if we get her out of the building, we wouldn't have to go far to get her into the sewers. The um actually the the hideout the the hideout that um, I was gonna say <laughs> the hideout that Adarin used Adarin Adarin yep uh would connect to a sewer grate. You just you didn't explore it very thoroughly, but there's likely a connect a sewer entrance somewhere around there. If we can get our if we can get most of us into the hideout to be ready to assist if needed, and you and potentially Catania if she's feeling sober at the time. Uh, can get your mother out, then we can get straight into the hideout and into the sewers. Right. You said Gent, you have... Gent, Gent considers the, the bullets that he currently has engraved. I've got a couple contingencies then. You said, uh, are the most of your families wizards? Frequently, yes. Heavy into the wizardry and those that aren't gifted or with the temperament for that sort of thing tend toward the blade and spear. Wizards, fighters, elder knights. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Much like how my family, well, the legion is set up back then. Desolation as well. Um, I have no yeah, they're spells. Using, they're using the wrong weapons for the uh, for the side of the Menar family that the fighter side comes from. <laughs> using halberds. It's been ten thousand years. There's been a little <laughs> bit of genetic drift. I like that gen halberds are apparently a genetic predisposition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, they're also mostly pure-blooded elves now, so it's like... Yeah. Ah, fine. That's... Yeah. All right. So Titania and I retrieve my mother, take her to Darren's hideout, access the sewers from there, meet the fiend hunters, and let them do their work. All before dawn tomorrow. Yep. Easy as pie. Um. When we get set up in the hideout, I'll send the message to Baishan to meet us in the sewers. All right. And then Let's the layer, head to the upper layers then. Walking or taking a cab? Cab. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Time's an issue. <laughs> do you do you want to go buy your house to pick up your money first? Not yet. Uh, I think we've got. Eh, got the rest of the day. It's still morning. Could we buy anything that would help us in this? Yes. I don't know. What, could. I don't know. What, <laughs> yeah. like, what do you think would help you in this? All right. Sphere How many cloaks of invisibility of can you get for? <laughs> Sphere of annihilation. Absolutely. Uh, uh, enlarge, reduce. <laughs> I have. I have that spell. Mm. Actually, I like, could lift. <laughs> I could. We could acquire. A dimension door spell activatable by whoever's infiltrating. That might make exfiltration easier. Actually, yeah. that's correct. Yes, there are generalist arcane practitioners that uh, have items like the the stones that we got for the shadow front <laughs> that allow you to cast uh, if you don't have the training. Those would be able to help entrance and exit. All right, well, and the empty well, ones. Forget. Substitute that with one of the spells where you can take someone along forcibly. Uh, Thunderstep. Fair <laughs> enough, yeah. All right, well, um, that's, that's important, actually. Yes, let's go get our funds and get equipment that'll help make this easier. Well, take an air cab back down. By the time you get there, the chest has already been delivered. I don't have enough gold for the air cab. <laughs> well, that's and okay. Scotch, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Go. 
whichever one of us. By the time you get back, the chest has already been delivered, and you enter the you enter the guild house, and Durin and Cathian are just standing there, staring at a chest of gold, trying to figure out what the fuck they're supposed to do with it. Six hundred don't touch. Six hundred and thirty of that is being divvied out to pay for the bills over the next three months because we're likely to be gone for that long. I see, Cathian says. <laughs> Durn. Everyone else in the party is being divvied out seven hundred and twenty-eight gold, three silver, three copper for the rest of for the rest of the payout. Durin eyes it for a second, reaches over, grabs a flask of water, dumps it into a flower pot, and scoops up exactly six hundred and thirty gold. He's good like that. <laughs> All right, the rest of it would be for you then. <laughs> they they head off to sort expenses for the next three months. <laughs> I'll death divvies out the rest of the money as quickly as possible. Okay. Yep. Seven twenty. Seven twenty. Twenty eight. Seven twenty eight. Nice. I can buy a thing. I'm so excited. Is that thing more alcohol? No. Cool. I mean, it yes. could be. But... Is, it could be. <laughs> is it something. really a short process when we have to? Uh, uh, because I'm sure somebody at some point just starts because it's this group. Somebody will not be able to help themselves. Go 17, 75, 32. <laughs> Valdez is very good at tuning people out. <laughs> And and she she's working in large clumps. She's just if, taking, and if if you, you know, need the if you need the help, you know Duran has a preternatural ability to count coins from sight alone. Yeah. So if you need help, he will offer it. Yeah. Well, that gets it done as quickly as possible because we have a job to do in a limited amount of time. So everyone gets seven hundred twenty-eight gold, three silver, three copper. All right. Let's get equipment we need, get in position, and get this done. Well, uh, universalist, by the way, not generalist. Yeah, I, I forgot what it was called. <laughs> universalist spell crystals. Yes. Oh, it seemed like a good idea when I said it out loud, and then it didn't. <laughs> but I realized that apparently Thunderstep is what we'd need to do because fine print and is a catatonic creature willing? No. A catatonic creature cannot be willing. <laughs> well, I've got to get some things for summoning that I've wanted for a little while, but we can wait until after this. It will help with this part. All right. Titania, my initial strategy is you can still cast that spell that makes us harder to see, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You do that, you turn into a spider, you and I go up and in. I assume, or spider or whatever have you. Mm -hmm. What what can you do that climbs? Spider works. Uh, How big of one? Ithram, mm -hmm. give me an Arcana check. Maybe a really small one. Let's see how big I can get. This is, of course, all 16. Of oh. So you are thinking about ways to get somebody in and out of a building when you have to go over a wall. Mm hmm. And all all the teleportation spells you're thinking of require an active or willing participant, and, and it's like it's hard to it's hard to finagle a person quietly if they are catatonic. Then you re then you recall that there is a particular kind of spell that paladins often get called find greater steed. Oh, you mm -hmm. don't think I have that written down in my notebook right here? <laughs> <laughs> If you could find a universal spell crystal for fine greater steed, you could potentially have a flying mount that could fly in 
and then fly back out with yep. an additional passenger. How thick are the walls, by the way? Um, five feet. So the other, the, uh, the other mount. <laughs> the, the, the other, the other option that Ithrim as a wizard might think of is pass wall, which just opens up a tunnel through the wall. Nice. That's very close to grabbing the noble lady, sticking her over your shoulder, and running. Though, yeah. I mean that that is currently that the is goal. Gent's solution. Yeah, yeah that, that's the Gent, goal. I as thought. far as <laughs> as far as Gent's concerned, we are running. We yeah, we are sneaking in, and then we are grabbing my mother and running away yeah. as fast as we can. Also, hopefully faster than. Also, remember the critical aspect of this. If they're going to break the curse at at her, then you're going to need a healer. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That can sustain her life after All the right. curse is broken. Is there anything else that we need to acquire? We also need the services of a healer to maintain vitality after the curse is broken. I can go ask for that, or I can go check the exact location of the sewer entrance so that we can convey it to your demon hunters. Uh, the demon hunters is the one who found the location, so they'll know where it's at. Oh, I thought the demon hunters did. No, they they gave know you a list of the sewer entrance as related to this. No, they, yeah, they they gave us the location we need to end up at, so they'll have their own way to get there. They the correction. They gave you a list of ideal locations. You yeah, haven't yet actually the told sewers. them. Yeah. Yeah. They haven't actually told you that they know how to get there, or which, or you haven't told them which okay. one of those locations oh, you'd like. Right? They they gave us they gave us I, qualifying criteria. Yeah, yeah. Would <laughs> they give us like a list of these. That are- the longer we are running with a noble woman over our shoulder to get to where we need to go, the more likelihood that this fails. <clears throat> mm-hmm. We can okay. get an invisibility. I'll, I'll get the feed hunter <laughs> Yeah. Um. Well, I can turn into a wolf spider. Uh, that's medium, and can climb. Um, if it's just climbing over a wall, I can turn into a giant lizard. That's large. And it could carry someone. Yeah. Um. Once we once we figured everything out as far as location and spacing, I'll send a letter to the fiend hunters because they're just they're still in the city at the moment. If you want to focus on finding us a healer that can sustain someone after the curse is broken, will my kind of healing not work? I don't know, game master. Uh, the implication would have been a healing for a sustained period of time. So okay. Titania's healing would work, but she would have to continually care for her until she was strong enough to care for herself. Which, if you're leaving the next day, doesn't work. Got it. Okay. So we need long-term services of a healer for yes. maintaining someone who is comatose. Precisely. Um, would any of us know where to get that? Temple District. Okay. Like, or one of the hospitals. Let's check which of the deities actually make any sense. If if any of you know anybody, if any of your characters have connections in any of the hospitals in the city. Uh, nominally, but not specifically. Yeah, uh, as far as deities, that would make sense. Um, Pull up my... Not a Radonir. Not a Rhaenyra Athos. I mean, a Radonir Radonir wouldn't be the worst choice. Um, But you're thinking of people like Argon. uh, An Argon... uh, Argon, Dagoth... um, uh, 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 Uh... Aradnir wouldn't be the worst choice. Core. Um, uh, uh, the Sundered God. Valkyr. Those are the tip, the ones you typically would think about for, for long-term care. Okay. 
Argon being at the top of that list. Fortunate that we have an excuse to leave the city before there's any political fallout. One must hope. It depends on if we're seen. Eh. If maybe not, I don't know. We can't come up with another plan. I can simply go to my boss and say. Hey, there's a noble family possessed by demons. Is there anything you can do to help us out? I just don't think that's a great idea. That does seem like it comes with a lot of um, ramifications, I'll use the word. I don't feel Strings. like it should be that rare of an occurrence. It happens. Demonic possession, insular groups with large amounts of power. I must assume it's a pretty regular occurrence. No, uh, noble families in Trum aren't normally, aren't regularly possessed by de by demons. <laughs> John, you know this. Carolina doesn't no, I know. have a different category for fiction and nonfiction literature. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> it's just... I'm best for everyone else's benefit. It's like, no, yeah. that's, not a, that's not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So, what are you doing? We have... Valdeth. Okay. So, Valdez has basically given the instruction for everyone to get the equipment that they think will help. Valdez is going to scout the location and figure out exactly how to get where we need to go and send a letter to Baishan about how to get there. Okay, so Valdeth is scouting out the sewers uh, for the for the sewer conflux mm -hmm. and the entrance from uh, Adarin's uh, hideout. Yeah. Titania. Um, I'm going to... If there's folks going to the market... Um, well... Yeah, I'm I'm going to get uh the supplies for summon fey creature and summon fey or um summon the other one that has material components. Um okay. I don't know where I can find those. Uh I'm assuming magical supply areas may Yeah, I, you can find them. You can find them in yeah. in markets. So summon fey spirit which costs 300 gold and uh do do, do not conjure animals it's uh, where is that one um summon bestial spirit which costs 200 so, um so again I'm gonna go with tanya spins day. all our gold instantly yeah well 500 all right so tanya's that's what tanya doing again yep uh gent is scouting the exterior of the estate, making sure that he knows what our best angle of approach is, and staying out of sight. Okay, Ariel. Uh, Ariel is making sure everybody knows where she's going, um, just in case they need anything. Um, and she is going to go upgrade her regular leather armor for regular studded leather armor. Spent all of her money early on on getting a gun, so she hasn't been able to do that yet. And she wants she wants to be an, a fighter with an armor class of better than fourteen. Would you Would you like to try to get magical studded leather armor? Uh nope, because ma buying magical shit is overly expensive. It is always <laughs> in every situation. Okay, Aaron. Um. If no one else is doing it, I will go source a cleric of probably Argon for long-term care. Okay. Ithram. Ithram is going scroll and universalist crystal shopping. Okay. I am going uh, to ask Gent for my budget on that because I'm not paying for your mother. 
workers' health care. Seven hundred gold. <laughs> Understood. All right. Uh, so if Valdeth and Ghent give me investigation checks, Carolina, give me a persuasion check. Investigation. Uh, yes. Great has, oh, yes, I'll it's investigation it. because that's what you use to investigate. <laughs> if you don't 15. want to roll investigation, don't be the person that goes to investigate. <laughs> I'm gonna spend my inspiration that gives me wit thing in this advantage. Setting. Use your cool. advantage. You don't get to grumble about having to roll investigation when you say, I'm going to go investigate. <laughs> That's for like perception or survival for tracking and finding paths. You're investigating. You're not, not in a forest. Good. You're in a city. <laughs> uh, okay. It's a concrete jungle. <laughs> uh, Carolina, you are able to secure the services, uh, the long term services of an Argon cleric for 200 gold. Okay. Um, who will be there? I'll just mark that off of my need. Yeah, uh, I assume that. Look, I have things I need to buy. Uh, Gent. <laughs> yep. Uh, Gent, you're pretty certain you can get in and out by yourself without getting seen. Once mm -hmm. you're carrying your mother, it's definitely going to be much harder to get out without being seen. And that's mm -hmm. not taking into account the potentiality of whether or not removing her from that room will be some sort of magical alarm because things are possessed right. by fiends and such. Uh -huh. um, Could you but make you... a polymorph her into something carryable? Polymorph is a spell that is well beyond, I think, any of our capabilities or budgets right now. That's uh, fair. But I don't you, know. But you do have a path. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Val Valdeth, very, you 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 were able to get into Adarin's hideout again because you've seen it done before. And yes, there is actually a connecting a connection to the sewers just outside her hideout. Um, and from there, you can very easily find where the the nearest sewer convergence is. You can also find that there is actually a street level access to this uh, to this convergence um, a few estates away from. Uh, like like two estates away from the Minar estate, so if you can't get to a Darren, or if you can't carry her, or if you're not confident in carrying her down a ladder, um, or sorry, if you can't get to a Darren's hideout, or you're not confident in carrying Minar's uh, Minar's mother down a ladder, then that might be an alternative way to get there. I'll note that, and that that is the entrance I will send to buy Sean. Okay, of how to get there and how to get to the convergence. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, Ariel. You can book price yep. by stud leather armor. So if that's what you're doing, go ahead and do that. Yep. Um, Ithram, what spells are you looking for? So many. Um, <laughs> Give me a list. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> the mount, the summon greater steed, uh, fly, uh, invisibility, clairvoyance, non detection. Uh, sending some of these for, are for this some of these are for Ithram <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Leoman's Tiny Hut and uh, I think that's literally all of them Thunderstep so, and Misty Step too but. you can find you can find Find Greater Steed it costs the price that's listed of 5,000 gold <clears throat> um, check that off for later yeah I mean that's uh, third level spells are a thousand gold. Second level spells are five hundred gold. First level spells are fifty gold. Um, you can find looking through uh, a universalist spell scroll. Uh, for uh, it's a unique variation of um, find greater steed. It is specifically uh, it's it's referred to as air elementals. Air Elemental Mount is the name of the spell. It is a third level spell that you can find uh, crystals or scroll versions of. the 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 person that is selling it tells you that it gives you a it gives you a flying cloud that you can ride. Ah, summon Nimbus. <laughs> Nimbus. Okay. Do you need to be pure of heart? <laughs> no, you need to cast a spell. 
You the, just got to know the right words. The spell scroll version of it is 750 gold. Okay. Uh, um, is the weather. spell scroll version enough for him to learn? Yep. I uh, can't learn it because it's a universal oh, wait, yeah, spell it's, scroll. Yeah, it's a universalist. Yeah. But you don't need, but uh, it, it uh, um, the universal spell scrolls don't provide their own ether. So the difference between spell scrolls and, and, and spell crystals, spell crystals provide their own ether. Um, spell scrolls don't. So it's easier for people that aren't spellcasters to use spell crystals as opposed to using spell scrolls. Okay. Uh, what about uh, invisibility, clairvoyance, and non-detection? Uh, so yeah, those are all what level are those? Uh, invisibility, I believe, is second level. Yeah. Clairvoyance and non-detection are both third. So you can find you can find both uh, scrolls and crystals for both of those. Uh, second level crystals are five hundred gold. Uh, scrolls are three hundred for second levels. Uh, third level crystals are a thousand gold. Third level scrolls are seven fifty. Okay. Um, oh, so all third level. Okay. So. Yep. So yeah, so like you don't take a level of exhaustion for using spell crystals, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, if you're a non-spellcaster, but you do take a level of exhaustion for using universalist spell crystal spell scrolls. Okay. So that's the principal difference. Yeah. Unless you're just a spellcaster and can use the appropriate level of spell slot. Correct. It's third two. Damn, all the spells I want at third level. <laughs> <laughs> most of them well, it's almost like your third level spells are a precious resource that people blow on arbitrary mm -hmm. things when they could be used for revivify <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so those are your those are your prices uh, you can go ahead and figure out if, if you're buying anything from there Yep. Uh, and Titania what were you going to get I was going to get the components for summon yes. uh, face spirit and summon bestial spirit. And you are you are able to find those easily enough. Yep. So, all right. Uh, are you getting any spell scrolls or crystals, Cody? Uh, yes, I believe so. Um, I probably only will get one, no matter what. Uh, well, unless you pull resources with others at the party. Yeah. You all have link pearls. You can get beyond each other. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. Once I've got the prices, I'll head back, uh, or I'll send Mal out, and because our link pearls don't reach that far. Um. I, I'm fine with like invisibility might work best here. Uh. I've got 229 gold. Invisibility or non-detection, if we're worried about them being magically detected leaving? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, yeah, actually, yeah, I think he's going to buy the non-detection. Crystal or scroll? Uh, not from, the, can he find it from a not a universalist so that he uh, can copy it into a spell? The spell book? No. The only no. the only marketplace uh, spell scrolls you could find at the moment are universalist spell scrolls. Okay. They seem that uh, universal universalist crystals and scrolls have sort of taken over the market in Turum. And so wizard like wizard scrolls just aren't sold as often. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. If we had the time to have a knockout down drag out battle with Gent's family, maybe we could get their spell scrolls. <laughs> take their yeah, you take their spell books. Yeah. <laughs> Fight an entire These house are my books players. now. <laughs> uh, yeah, like I said, if we had the time and inclination. Mm -hmm. Send the thief in and just steal all their spell books. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's so just a crystal, I need you to then. Take every book in the building. <laughs> <laughs> here's a Here, bag of here's holding. Here's a bag of holding I made yeah. yesterday. Go nuts. Uh, 
yeah. Uh, he's going to get a scroll, or not a scroll, a uh, crystal for um, invisibility then. Okay. So that's so a 300? Five, 500 gold. 500. The, cri the crystal's 500, yeah. The scroll is 300. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, so you all make your purchases. You inform the fiend hunters. You gather, I'm assuming, at the hideout. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. All right. So you all regroup in a few hours at the hideout. Well, Ghent, from this point on, it's your show. Excellent. I wasn't terrified enough. Could I have bought one more crystal? Sorry. Sure. What crystal? Disguise self. So that's a second level crystal? No. First, first level crystal? So 50 so gold. 50 gold, yeah. Yeah. I will buy one of those as well. All right. All right. So it's me and Titania. Titania is going to shroud us. Yep. If anything happens, we should be within Link Pearl range, I believe, for the majority of the transit. We have the crystal so we can turn her invisible. And then... Yes, this. Uh, he holds out the invisibility one. This is to hide her. And he hands it over the uh, disguise self one as well. And this one is to hide you, if at all possible, uh, for disguising yourself. Um, you can all use right. it on the way out, either one. But, oh shit, they're both concentration. I just realized that. It's okay. There are two people there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, if you take the, the disguise, do you want to do that before we go in? That way, if. Actually, disguise self is not concentration. It just lasts an hour. Oh. Uh, yeah, it would be a pretty bad spell if it was concentration. Alter self is the one that's concentration. Oh, yep. All right. There we go. As long as you don't get slapped for being an imper you know, As long as you don't get slapped while you're impersonating someone, you're fine. <laughs> really. You De have the con score to deal with it. Detect magic is right above it in the list, and I just quick saw C, and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully oh. these are enough. I assume Gent's got both of those. Yeah, Gent will take both of those for now. Uh, what's the highest level of spell you can cast, Gent? Second. You can cast both of those spells without having to make there a roll. Go. All right. Excellent. Sweet. Good. All right. We ready? Yes. We'll be waiting here for you. We've got your back. Thank I you. cast uh, Pass Without Trace on us. Okay. And head for the wall. Start climbing, stealthy give me style. Dexterity check, or give me stealth checks for both of you with a plus okay. 10 for your for Pass Without Trace. Um, and I am going to, because that's a concentration, but I can keep concentrating as an animal. Um, I'm going to turn into a small spider, I think. And just okay. hang on to Ghent. That's probably a good idea. All right. Yep. I'm using inspiration. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please do. Do I make a spell? 23. As well? Uh, no, you don't need to if okay. you're hanging on Gent. Yeah. Gent's the one moving, so. Cool. All right. Uh, I, have you noticed, I noticed ability, yeah. a small spider riding on something that I don't notice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, they've already taken off, Ithram, so. All right. No problem. Um, but you you climb up the wall with your spider climbing. Uh, it's easier yep. for you to sneak because you don't have to worry about holding on to things and making a lot of noise as you're moving. Uh -huh. uh, so you climb the wall. Hop over from that to the gardener's shack. Hop over that to the wall of the actual house itself. Climb up. Yep. Go around. Being very careful to not ever like be in front of windows as you're passing by. Uh-huh. Uh, and eventually, you make your way to her room. 
the window is closed and it's locked from the inside. Okay. Um, he will. Can he use Tinker's tools to try and disassemble the window latch from this side? You can use Tinker's tools to try to open the window latch from this side. Okay, sure. Dexterity, dexter, uh, Tinker's tool with dexterity. This is where this all goes to shit. <laughs> Oh Shit. my god. Do you, uh, do you have any inspiration left? I, I do have one left, yes. Okay. So I, I'm going to use, use that. <laughs> <laughs> 12. Okay. So you, you slip you slip uh, 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 a thin wrench uh, through, or a thin like wrench through trying to hook the latch. And mm -hmm. you you twist your fingers at such a point where you sort of spin it out of your hand and it begins mm -hmm. to drop and right. you you begin to just sort of instinctively grab at it and you realize that if you try to grab too quickly you're just going to punch through the window so you let it fall and it hits the sill it just sort of lands there and once it stops moving you grab it to make sure you don't fuck something up uh. And then get it up and unlock the latch. <laughs> All right. Okay. Open the window. All right. Window inside. Open. Inside. Hop inside. I assume my mother is still seated in her yep. chair. Still seated where she there. usually is. Still staring. Door at the far end of the room is locked and is closed, not locked. Mm-hmm. All right. And Ghent will, at this point, uh, just, he's actually going to sneak to the door, open, and like crack it open and see if there's anybody in the hall. There are guards in the hall. Okay. Close, the Close that lock. again, then. Close the door and lock it behind him. All right. Quietly as possible. We have guards in the hall, but I've gotten into my mother's room. I think we're going to have to go out the window and back over. Well, make her invisible and just, you can walk. You don't have to have hands free. Yes. So pulls out the crystal, casts invisibility on my mother. She becomes invisible. All right. Feel around for her shoulders and legs. Hoist her out of the chair and just walk, sneak out the window right. as I'm carrying her. <laughs> Make an athletics check to carry your mother. Thankfully, you are a brawny little gun wizard. Yes, I am. 25. Good. So you don't have to make your stealth check with disadvantage. Just a regular Good. stealth check. Good. Okay, and stealth check plus 10, 26. All right. You so as you leave the room, mm -hmm. the fire goes from a normal natural reddish orange to mm -hmm. blue. Mm. Okay, and still moving, <laughs> burning a little bit harder as it um, roars a little bit in behind you. Because I'm still pretty good at hearing things. Um, yeah. I have a very high perception that's still there, even in, in wild yeah, shape. Yeah, yeah. Um, guard sounds. Has anything changed? Give me a perception check. Okay. Nineteen. Not that you're aware of at the moment. Okay. But Gent is moving very fast now. Mm -hmm. uh, as he as he books it back across the way he came. Yep. Up the gardener's shack, up over the wall. <laughs> and you are outside the wall holding an invisible person. And at this point, we are stopping the stealth and just running our ass off straight back to Adarin's hideout. <laughs> um, yeah, at, at that point, um, Titania's going to shift back to herself because then I can help carry and I'm pretty strong. So Did you see the fire? <sighs> yes. Do you know what it means? What does that mean? Yes. I assume it means something terrible. So we okay. had best move quickly. Right. I can't wait for it to be revealed that 
this was all a voluntary thing to sacrifice herself to keep a demon bound in place and that has now been removed and Taram is doomed. Yep. Okay, so if that was the case, you don't like give the guys no information about the lady's condition. Yes, you are because you are a noble house and you are dumb. Mm. Okay, <laughs> well hey, then it gets family's fault. Maybe, maybe it was part of the contract, who knows? Could be. Still their fault. Born with it. Mm. Yeah, so then it's, it's still it's still their fault for not seeking any help with that until now. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you get you you return back to a turn side up. Yep. With an invisible person in tow. With an invisible woman who apparently isn't resisting at all, which is excellent. Mm. Completely catatonic. Oh. Still. Yep. Here she is, and the fire flared up as we left. So yeah, I'm cool. assuming someone who knows is in the know. Hmm. Well, let's Lovely. get down to where we need to be quickly now, then. You lead the way, then, because I didn't see this part. <clears throat> well, that will guide the group to the sewer complex. Yeah, you make your way uh, through the, the out just outside uh, uh, Darren's hideout entrance is another sewer entrance that you everyone climbs through. Uh, it takes only a few minutes for you to get uh, to the conflux, to the sewer conflux. Um, Carolina and... will take the back because it's very possible people forgot again that she can't see in the dark. You've <laughs> never told us, so no. <laughs> I mean, she's told you she's human. Yeah, that but the fair. humans are are yeah. And yeah, again, I, I think so did Ariel initially. Yes, Ariel uh, did did claim to be human for a good portion of time. So, eventually you get to the conflux, and waiting for you there are three fiend hunters and a cleric. Uh, the cleric who looks very out of place. Uh, Argon clerics tend to look like, sort of like country doctors or farmers, kind of. And, and that kind of vision doesn't really mesh with a sewer, but they're, they're, they're very you know, calmly, patiently sitting there chatting with the fiend hunters, making conversation, being amiable. Um, and when you arrive with an invisible person in tow, uh, on the ground, uh, the you see the the cleric and the fiend hunters have been sort of standing around a ritual circle that's been prepared. Uh, there is a there is a like a, a a long cushion that has been laid in the middle of it, surrounded by uh, candles that are currently unlit. Ah, welcome. Please lay the victim down on the pillow. Gent will. <laughs> She's invisible. Should I stop that? Yes. Stop and concentration on the invisibility. Hands the disguised self crystal back to uh, Ithram. Hmm. Take a few steps back. Make sure you maintain a distance away from the ritual circle until we're done. Give him some space. <laughs> Um, I intended to do on turn preparation that I completely forgot about. Too late now. Uh, Baishan steps forward. Uh, Bel Belshazzar and the other fiend hunter sort of step back and flank the, the ritual circle, uh, sort of providing you all with a physical barrier to stand behind. Um, as Baishan steps into the middle of the circle and kneels down next to the person next to uh, Gent's mom. Tanya, real quick, is going to um, wild shape again, um, this time to get my temporary hit points. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a bear. <laughs> no, not a bear. Uh, it's a symbiotic entity. So oh, okay. I get 24 extra temporary HP, which is almost mushrooms, all of my HP. So. Mushrooms, <laughs> pop, mushrooms pop out along yep. Tanya's arms. What is it? Oh, that draws her great sword. Is there the is a one, which might be relevant. There is a coldness to the room that you all are suddenly aware of. You sort of like breathe out, and your your breath fogs and mists as it comes out. As Baishan removes the plague mask that he's been wearing and the hat that was attached to it, and you see a human, uh, dark hair, uh, sort of uh, black. Uh, sort of uh, 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 what's it called? Salt and pepper gray. Mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, what? 
Salt and pepper is literally what it's called. Yeah, yeah, salt and pepper. Uh, salt and pepper, gray. Uh, hair cut short, shaved on the sides, a little bit longer on the top. Um, odd that his hair is that sort of gray when he looks to be mid twenties, uh, judging by his judging by his facial structure. Uh, beginnings of a beard. A uh, couple of heavy scars along uh, around the face, including one that comes through one eye. The eye itself appears to be dead. Uh, 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 with the with the scar going over it. Uh, the other eye being a a a dark brown, and his skin itself being fairly dark as well. Kneels down, reaches out towards the area around, uh, her, and just sort of seems to like grab the air and pull. And as he does, all the unlit candles around her erupt into this blue fire and begin to coalesce in this almost cyclone of fire that surrounds him and her as he wrestles with something invisible. And after a few moments of this, he holds up his hand in front of his face, pulls a knife out from behind his belt, scars the back of his forearm with it and plunges his hand into this cyclonic fire rift that has appeared. There's a wince and a grimace of pain as all of this blue fire disconnects from the candles around her and immediately leaps into the open wound on the back of his forearm, scalding it closed and absorbing into his flesh. As all the fire... <laughs> dissipates there's a bit of a pain sound coming from Baishan, and you see this tattoo or this this marking appear from uh, along his forearm of this blue fire just sort of scattering its way down the forearm onto the back of his hand <sighs> cleric the 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 cleric moves forward and immediately begins to tend to the body as Baishan steps back, water and uh, Belshazzar summons forth a bucket of water from somewhere. You guys aren't pre uh, sure precisely where it was hidden previously. Sets it down next to Baishan, who plunges his arm up to the elbow into it. And there is this sizzling as the water begins to evaporate from around his arm. I suppose that worked. The fiend's power has been absorbed by me. Mm. Thank you were you. correct in assuming it was a fire demon. Uh, you can see the sort of like slowly ease, uh, like easing of tension as this water evaporates from this bucket almost entirely and another one is put forward and he plunges his arm again and it begins to evaporate again. It would seem that this particular method of dealing with a fiend's curse takes a bit of a toll on the fiend hunter. Mm -hmm. Will she wake soon? And Gent is going to try and see if Dianaif has started to <laughs> regain consciousness or anything. She's unconscious, which is a change, as opposed to just oh, sort of staring mm -hmm. catatonic. Her eyes are closed. Mm -hmm. uh, the cleric is tending to her. She's very weak. Uh, I cannot guarantee that she will ever regain consciousness, but if she does, it will be some time. If it wouldn't be a trouble, I would recommend allowing me to relocate her somewhere outside the city. Taram is not the m best environment for someone recovering. Well, for okay. someone who potentially has... A, a a a a family cult going after them. Gent's gonna bend down and kiss his mother on the forehead. Once you've found a place to, for her to recuperate, you can send the location to me, and he'll make sure that the the cleric has the address for. I'll be I'll be taking the steel that. heart. <laughs> If you if you'd allow it, I'll be taking it to the Argonian Temple in Ilhanador. Well, it is it is a great place of healing. Mm 
which you've all been to. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> that the giant hollow tree with a statue mm-hmm. in the middle. <laughs> right. And Gent just sort of leans back up against a wall and kind of sags for a bit. Uh, by Sean, did you learn anything new now that you have come into contact with this creature? He looks up at you and you see a little bit of that blue fire flicker out the side of his eyes. And he reaches over, grabs that plague mask and puts it on. We were correct in our assumptions. It's definitely a shepherd, a nightmare shepherd. I can feel it trying to worm its way into my brain at the moment. Don't worry. If it succeeds, my companions will kill me, and that'll be the end of it. Speaking of family cults, some of you were able to operate a drone, did did your niece leave that behind? It was not in the hideout when you guys went through it. I don't, I don't believe, so. believe so. Jinx, you owe me an ale. It might not be out of place to do something to check like, how the estate is reacting. I, I could go back. Think- I think all things considered, Ghent, we owe these gentlemen an ale. Indeed. I mean, you've got a bottle of really good alcohol. I do. (laughs) (laughs) But that requires reaching into your bra to get it. Yeah. (laughs) I I feel like as much as I probably shouldn't give this in front of Titania, there's like some decorum element to oh, no, the I... noble dwarven lord reaching down into the boobs going here <laughs> you go yeah <laughs> oh i know it was just funny okay uh belshazzar looks over at the group of you we will tend to buy sean here and ensure that he is not a threat before we leave this conflux We'll also aid your cleric in relocating your mother, if so if so necessary. Thank, Thank you. you for your assistance. It is our duty. Which is again said with that sort of obviously sort of attitude mm-hmm. that the fiend hunters have, where it's like, our job is to kill fiends and die killing fiends. Like, I don't know why I don't know why you're thanking us. They're they're, <laughs> they're Kriegers for demons. Kind of, yeah. I feel Agent like you need that lecture from episode three of Fire Force. <laughs> or possibly earlier than that. I don't remember. That is very specifically why Ariel is not thanking them. <laughs> they did their job. Ariel, Ariel understood. At great same. personal cost. Technically, they got paid. They got paid in absorbing the power of a demon, which fuels their magics. But, you know. At great yeah. personal cost, but okay. <laughs> Not all jobs are for money. Also, it's still them doing their job. Good for we, them. If we're doing their jobs all the time. Yeah. All right. Why should I thank the firefighter? <laughs> job. He got paid. <laughs> I mean, that makes sense for Ariel's attitude. Ariel <laughs> would absolutely think that. That's fair. <laughs> Anyways. Until it, became, until it became our benefit to actually say the words, thank you. Well, Ghent is going to head back to the Monaris state then and just sort of try and get, a, get an idea of from the exterior what, if anything, is going on. Hmm? Make a perception check. Hmm. Yep. Can I do that too? Sure. Eleven. That left will go too, just because the three nobles. Yeah. Go. Thirteen. I'm not going. I'm gonna spend an inspiration go on that. Twenty-two. I want to do it again. Okay. Just because. An inspiration. Feeling petty. Uh. Seventeen. <laughs> uh. 
um, there you go with the night. Uh, I know so 13, uh, 17, 22, 11. Um, it's hard to tell from the outside because the guards are going to be guards no matter what. And all the, like all the reaction that you would be looking for would be on the inside. Um, Valdeth, it doesn't look like anybody has noticed yet, if only because the window to the bedroom is still open. So if go. if they've noticed, they might just not have gone to the room. Mm-hmm. But as far as you can tell, the window is still open. So Valdeth will nod and lead the other two back to a safe I can, place. I can go in there and check. Uh, that we've all Terrible done. idea. Do not return to the place you just did something. They don't know we were there. They're magic users. That's making more risks. Don't do that. But I don't think they've noticed anything, or at least if they have, they haven't done anything about it yet, because the window that you left out of is still wide open. And if you're feeling like you need to do something to contribute to this whole thing, may I remind you, it was your magic that let us get in and out without being detected in the first place. So you've already contributed quite enough. Let's not take any more risks. Let's get somewhere safe, namely back to the base. I'm actually going to go since we're already up here, say, you know, because we're going to be gone for like three months. Say bye to family? Yeah. Go for it. See you back mm-hmm. down there. <laughs> I'm still down there with the fiend hunters uh, mm-hmm. at this point. Is there anyone else who's still there? Uh, yeah, it's from an aerial. Hmm. Cool. The two people who probably wouldn't just leave to go do a thing so that I can have a private chat with some fiend hunters. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> cool. If anything, Ithram is walking around the circle that they laid out trying to figure out, trying to study it. <laughs> We're going to check. All right. So the one that seems the least busy with the general well, assistant. Not advantage, but natural 20. Oh. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Mm-hmm. Right. Keep right. going. Uh, Carolina will speak to quietly enough that if they're not paying, if the other two are paying attention to other things, they might not notice. How possible is it for those of your order to determine if someone is facing infernal possession or influence? Returning the conversation in quiet because it's a courteous thing to do. Uh, the fiend hunter responds with, "It depends entirely on the nature of the possession. Uh, if it's if it is an act of possession, typically we can find it fairly easily. Uh, if it is uh, more passive or corruptive influence, it's a little bit it's some most of the time easier to hide, though." Our order has cultivated a presence that tends to cause uh, fiendish influence to react to our very being. So, typically, we're able to provoke some sort of response. Carolina sort of thinks about that. And yes, I apologize for my daughter laughing right there. <laughs> I, I know it's just a kid being happy. It's just at the exact moment that it's like, how do demons work? I thought that. I happy, thought that was my unrelated shot. child is a little bit. No, that was that was. Are just... we sure that is unrelated though? To she, was, fair. she was. She was laughing. The question. She was laughing because mommy was chasing her. Mm. Fair. I'm just imagining that was that that laughter was coming from by Sean and just like, what the fuck. You just took a demon. You do not start doing that. <laughs> if the laughter was coming from Bishon, it would have been cut off by a spear from Belshazzar. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, well, right. yep, he's gone. This one's done. 
This one's broken. Life. Bring me another. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as they start giggling like a child, that's when you kill them. <laughs> Pretty much. Damn straight. None of my characters last very long if they're fiend hunters. Is what <laughs> but yeah, so that's the answer you're given. Which is, to sum up, yes, they can. They, they have the ability to identify uh, infernal possession. It just depends on what kind of infernal possession as to how successful they are. And Aaron has frozen. Oh no! Yep. Yep, it's frozen. Yep. 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 <clears throat> um, so, getting to Ithram's natural 20 on the Arcana check. <laughs> yep. Uh, it seems uh, this this um, this uh, formation that you're looking at seems to be a amplification uh, circle. Specifically, it's designed to amplify ether that is injected into it. Uh, based on what you saw ritual-wise, what just happened, it seems like the fiend hunters have cultivated their ether to be particularly uh, affecting to fiends and fiendish ether. And so when Baishan injected his ether into this ritual circle, it amplified his ether and that caused a instinctive reaction from the demonic ether within her, causing it to come forth. And then using the using sort of the the, the open wound, he absorbed the demonic ether. Okay. Cool. Basically it's like, you know, he he, he it's kind of like dynamite fishing. <laughs> like ethereal dynamite fishing is basically what you just witnessed. Yeah. He yeah, he he just he just catfished. He just noodled a demon. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay. wah, they don't like that. And here you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, and before uh Titania wandered off, Gen yeah. would have elbowed Valdeth and been like do you want anyone to come with you? <laughs> I get the feeling the answer is no. I would have asked You're that. Still to Tanya, supposed to ask. Yes. <laughs> Titania, do you want someone to go with you? No, it's probably going to be awkward. I'll get yelled at. It'll be fine. Insight check. Make an insight check. Sure. God damn it. <laughs> I'm not even going to roll then. Zelda will roll insight just in case. Seems legit. He's far more <laughs> trusting anyway. Okay. Um, this would be a persuasion, I think. Uh, She's not really lying. All right. Yeah. Seems legit. Yeah, no, she's fine. It, it, it's kind of off today. <laughs> Possibly because of uh, hangover stuff. Absolutely but like she's steadier. Fine. <laughs> Go on. See your family. Yep. And I'll head off to my estate. Sure. Yeah, you go to you go also to the, miss the palace. <laughs> oh no, the no, the, it's not the palace. Her family doesn't live in the palace. Her family lives on this lair. Mm. Um, you go home. Your home is a lot more where the where the Minar estate is. This sort of gothic enterprise at the moment. Your estate is this weird combination of high elven architecture and forestry. Yep, like it's this. These tall sloping walls with trees growing out of them uh, and bushes sort of lining things. No gate to speak of uh, because once you pass through the walls, it's a hedge maze. Mm -hmm. And inside the hedge maze are a variety of animals. Yay. Um, I have chewed on cement leaves in a vain attempt to hide alcohol breath. You, you what? Sorry. Shoot on some mint leaves. We oh, have yeah. mint you in the garden. Oh, yeah, Got yeah, yeah, some yeah. of that. 
Yeah, you got some mint. It on. may or may not help. Um, yeah, I'm gonna start wandering and seeing if I could find anyone. If you're I mean, not welcome in this estate, the animals will let you know very quickly. Pretty mm-hmm. much. Yeah. Uh, you you eventually make your way through the maze, uh, and you find yourself in the front garden out in front of the house, where you see a fam- the familiar sight of Pelerin Valkorian Havan. Uh, a tall, light green skin, dark green haired elf, uh, with a with a full with a full green beard as well, um, and this sort of uh, your 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 father's eyes are are odd even for uh, Eladrin. Um, mm-hmm. He has black sclera and green pupils, so his eyes really pop when you look at him. Uh, wearing leather armor, uh, but not wearing, not wearing like any of his weapons, uh, at all. You, you can actually see they're sort of on a weapons rack off to one side where they've been, where they've been, where they are whenever he doesn't need them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know that your father is a ranger. Uh, and so he's typically tending the garden when he's not doing, he doesn't like to not be doing things. Yeah. And a life of luxury means a lot of not doing things. So he tends the garden. The maze is his, the maze is his fault. The animals are his fault. Basically everything that's forestry that that's taken care of that, that is foresty around the estate is his fault. And he is currently tending to a bonsai tree because he can't get enough of doing something. <laughs> and so he's got these little teeny tiny scissors and he's got this large tree and he's just, I'm going to tackle hug the back of him in an attempt to surprise. You hello! Su- you succeed. Oh, hello. Who is this? I have this. Let me, let me guess. Let's see. Attached like a fungus. It must be Titania. Yep. He turns hello. around and wraps the arm around you. His arm. He has weirdly long arms in that he snakes his arm around your shoulder down under your uh, down under the opposite arm into your waist and just sort of picks you up pulls you around to the front of him so he can give you a proper hug mm, yep hugging back how are you doing darling girl pretty good um you've been drinking yes the mint doesn't hide it it just accentuates it yeah yeah it's trying something new Fortunately, um, your mother's at work, so between okay, us. Okay, good. Um, I wanted to come by and um, see how everyone was doing, you know, see how the garden. I saw that the, oh, goodness, I just saw a hawk out my window. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there was also a hawk in the garden. <laughs> yep. Um, saw... The you rearrange the topiary. There's like a, it's like an elephant now. Yes, it's very cool. I like to redecorate. Mm-hmm. Gives me something to do. Um, but I wanted to uh, say uh, hi to Pipsqueak, and um, we're heading out for a little bit. Um, for like a couple months. So I figured should do that before. Oh, I went and talked to um. Uh, so I remember all of my characters' family names here, real quick. Um, Fenivel. How is she doing? Good. They're doing some weird magic stuff. It's very ex- She said it was very exciting. That sounds exciting. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so, yeah, just saying hi. Um, well, uh, Celia is inside with the babysitter. If you'd like to go check in on them. Yes. Um, we're also heading. So we're heading. Uh, well, first off, I may have found an answer to what had been happening to me before the whole yes. getting sick thing. Apparently it's just fine. It's It's part of the god emperor's divine whatever Mm. sort of sparking up so it's totally good i'm not of that blood so i guess i just wouldn't be familiar with it you can tell mom i will okay and uh yeah we'll be heading off in the morning uh uncle varnavis got us a job good good 
pay as well? Yes. Good. Yeah. A lot. We got paid in advance, actually. Impressive. I had enough to get this, and I'll pull out the, the gilded flower, which is, like, I'm imagining a very elaborate, like, stuff has been kind of added to it, like, lily yeah. type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all yeah. covered in gold. And... Mm hmm Ooh, very nice. I like that. That'd make a good uh, ornament. He sort of like looks over at one of the, the bushes that is currently being shaped into something new. <laughs> I should think you about You can't have like this, that. though. This is for me. Obviously is, uh... not. It's yours. <laughs> I think I can use it to, like, summon things. Ah, I see you've taken a little bit of your father's training little bit is finally sticking in so as, as he as he whistles and a wolf pack comes around the corner <laughs> of one of them it's like six or seven little wolves of varying sizes and age mm -hmm. and they come and sort of like almost like dogs just sort of surround you and begin sniffing oh yeah no i scratch all of the various heads yes if they, i if i like know that one of them likes like this one spot behind the ear i'm gonna uh, uh, yep oh yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah that occupies some time. Um, yeah, and then we'll be, uh, so we've got like night and then bright and early tomorrow uh, oh, over to look at some stuff behind the shadow wall. So that's important. If you're getting up early, remember that it is best to water plants at night, not other substances. Yeah. Mm hmm Yep. You can see the smile on his face. <laughs> Valda says that a lot, too. So I get lots of reminders. Good to know. I wanted to go see... I'm going to go uh, say hi to Pipsqueak. And I'll leave him, go and hang out with my baby the, sister. The wolves disperse. Mm -hmm. And you go in, and yeah, the, so there's a there's a there's a babysitter. Uh, a um, uh, you, you're pretty certain this babysitter was hired by your grandfather because it's a dryad. Okay. Uh, who just sort of phases in and out of the various woodwork of the house uh, at various times. Uh, and there is uh, a a young a, a small elf. Uh, uh, playing uh, amidst a series of uh, carved toys that you know your father carved for her. Um, just sort of playing with blocks. Celia! And I'm going to start, like, chattering away in in uh, Elvish. She begins chattering at you, too, not saying <laughs> anything. It's just babbling, mm -hmm. you know? Yep, yep. And... Yeah, uh, is going to do that for a while. Um, as long, basically, Titania's going to hang out there as long as she thinks before her mother will come back home. Because mm. she doesn't want to do eventually, that. Eventually, as you're talking with her, you do hear her say, Tanya. <gasps> yes! Can't get the first part of it. <laughs> Just the last part of it. <laughs> Titania. Uh-huh. Tanya. She seems to have been able to identify you as Tanya. Aww. <laughs> yep. You give it an hour or so. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna expend some magic on this whole thing. <laughs> I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do all the spells. Uh, Druidcraft. Uh, Various uh, things. Speak with your baby. <laughs> Fairy, I'm going to do some fairy fire. So I'll use up all of my first level spell slots, essentially, <laughs> on fairy fire. Because this is fun and exciting. Oh, yeah. And it gets giggles and laughs and screeches oh, yeah. uh, in equal measure. Mm -hmm. Eventually, yep. you're ready to leave. Mm -hmm. yep. You head out. Your father yep. has moved on to... Uh, he seems to be playing a violin. Just sort of sitting on, sitting on a bench, just playing. Heading out. Yep. I am. Take care. Gotta head back. Bye. He holds uh, his arms open. Yep. Big hug. Kiss on the cheek. Hold mm -hmm. your bang. And you head back out to the maze. You managed to avoid meeting your mom the entire time. Yay. 
she's apparently busy at work, which yep. uh, is code for which which is code for has been at work for the past three days and probably will be there for another three days. Yep. <laughs> um. Yeah, I I uh, also tell him to say hi to my brother. Mm-hmm. And he says he will do. Head on back. Armir, like your mother, busy at work. <laughs> yep. But uh, those of you that are in the sewers with the fiend hunters still, do you eventually leave or are you hanging out there until they leave? You're muted. You're muted. Aaron. Yeah, eventually. Especially if it's clear that neither of the others are going to leave and give me some privacy. Ariel and Ithram? Uh, I mean, she's not specifically, like, looming. But she's definitely present for a, at least a good portion of the time. Yeah. Barbarians are not notorious for their patience when compared to fighters and wizards. <laughs> yeah. Um, after he takes a few notes about the the circle, um, he's gonna help head back to the house. Uh, there are some things I must transcribe and letters to be written, and he'll head back to the house. I'll head that way as well. Okay. Yeah. So everyone eventually makes it back to the house. Ithram starts copying uh, what's it, magnified gravity into his <laughs> into a <his> spell book. <laughs> uh, is gonna stay in the sort of den area, um, living room, whatever it is. And then after he's done with that, he's gonna write a short letter. Uh, a small uh, letter that could be carried by a messenger hawk and uh, basically uh, where he's going to be what he's encountered so far uh, at least on the Shatterfront side and then uh, also a bit about the new magic and then he's going to put it on Mal's leg and send him to desolation. that will be a few days before Mount gets back to you. Yep. Where's Ghent? In his room? Uh, Ghent is current. Yes, actually. Ghent would be in his room. Yep. Mm -hmm. Titania pops in your, win in your door. He's in the middle of writing something in a notebook and just sort of looks up. Yes. How was the visit? Good. For you. Um, she's gonna spread out her hands. <laughs> is gonna cast summon conjure animals. Okay. For eight small puppies. <laughs> eight small dogs appear. At you, on you. At and on <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> they are they are small retrievers, so it's yep. all like, you know, lots of shaggy hair and everything. Yep. Uh-huh. <laughs> there's like there's a pause and then he just busts out laughing <laughs> and starts picking up as many of them as he can shoves a few into your hands they're gonna last an hour all right let's go show the rest of the house then <laughs> yes <laughs> the rest of you hear a cavalcade of paws <laughs> <laughs> As Ghent, Titania, and eight dogs come around a corner. <laughs> Sick them. <laughs> There's there are... an instinctual going for the gun. <laughs> when... Don't think about it. <laughs> just just like on instinct. Right. Sure. Absolutely. They are like turn and walk away. I will pick up one of the puppies, pet it. I know you're a magical entity that is actually a spirit it summoned into this form. Have some dignity. <laughs> <laughs> Head down, puppy. 
they're fey spirits, so they probably don't pee anywhere, which is the best yeah. part. <laughs> Remember, one of them is, one of them is peeing in the corner in the right now. And I will be just walking up somewhat uncomfortably close to Ghent. Definitely within the range where his weapons are, are at disadvantage and mine are not. We need to talk. Yes, I suppose we do. And on that bombshell, we'll end for the week. Say goodbye, everybody. Bye. 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 Goodbye.